Forgotten Realm, somewhere relatively nearby Broadway. It is PC85 Plays on the Podzilla 1985 Network. I am Cody Sandusky. Thank you for joining us yet again for Session 3 of our detour into Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, our respite from the Star Wars saga. And we will be returning to that, as mentioned, at the first week of January. But we're giving you some medieval-ish Eaton lore as we get you through your holiday season. Coming into week three of this, I think we're going to have some fun today as the crew dies to convince a giant slayer to join their endeavor to save a small village that they, by the end of this, may or may not actually like. Those three compatriots joining along in this endeavor are Double H as the half-orc barbarian Bacchus. Oh. Joining in as the female half-elk warlock, it is Jenny, a.k.a. Lindsay Wolfgong. I really feel like I'm surrounded by idiots today. And Rose and Blood Birdman himself, it is. Today. Yeah, nah, today that's not, is a, a loose name. term. She's been on the network. You've been around for a while. You know that idiocy is our middle name. And Rose and Blood oh, that's Birdman, not my name it either is today. My name today is Syed Hassan Nasrallah. I am the uh, Secretary General of Hezbollah. Uh, he has changed his name to, uh, oh, how, it's something how, bad, how many, how many lists did I just get us on? <laughs> I... I got a couple mice in my pocket, and they're all strapped with dynamite. Sure is. Okay, great. Ready to rock and roll. I, I, us? Well, you got a mouse in your pocket? I'm not getting on any fucking lists. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, Cody. Oh, oh boy. Cody, okay. would you say anyway, that my introduction was yeet? Or I Hunter don't know one? what to do with this. Call of Duty has poisoned the minds of the children, ladies and gentlemen, and I firmly believe in John Thompson. <laughs> Damn it. We okay. need to be banning this filth in this country. <laughs> better, uh, skirt, better or worse than Kenny Rogers into a ditch. Holy shit! Okay, horse time. I, I the really table time game sounds like something all the kids the need for Christmas. Unleashed upon the audience. I mean, this is this is horse We've time. Jump the table on this. Time <laughs> yeah. Welcome to it. Oh and my you, god! Yes. What? I. Th- I think a Podzilla tabletop game yes. with all of our references that well, we stole from other things now. would be fantastic. We're Again, making we, it. Uh, <laughs> We're making I don't know this, if I right? need to be involved in the creative process, but sure, I'll, I'll join in. I'll be the spokesperson. Hey, it's it's just uh, it's parody. It's all legal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be honest. Imitation is the sincerest <laughs> form of flattery and the thinnest veil oh, over copyright yes. law, so we're okay. He is. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Cody? <laughs> Fair use, just like YouTube videos. No, we really don't. You don't really have Weird to get permission nice for any of it. So come, it's true. I'm not. I mean, I'm now I'm thinking of the Space Ghost bit where he hits a B flat, but I can't hit that, so it's fine. Coming back to the Forgotten Realms, Faerun, at the end of our last session, our traveling group, and I'm just going to power through at this point because I've got to get a train of thought. I've lost it multiple <laughs> times along the way. Rosenblood, Jenny, Bacchus, and Tastra have all found their way through Weeping Rock Trail, (laughs) encountering myriad uh, evils or those who wish to do ill upon them, and some friends along the way as well, maybe ones they won't see again. But they have made their way into a clearing a few miles past Weeping Rock and into what appears to be the the small cottage and homestead of one Jaya Giant Slayer. At least the the, the, uh, conclusion (laughs) that this group has come to is that this is who this person is, albeit... They'll find out shortly once they try to speak to her, question mark. That may be what they do, knowing this well, adventuring Let's, let's keep plan, all of our options knows? open. It could be something much more nefarious. I mean, I'm not implying that you're going to burn down her cottage and run away, but that is an option that is available to you. <laughs> I think it honestly right, depends exactly. on how much of yeet and skirt she hears in her head while she go aggro and, you know, Eldritch blast the place and just walk away whistling. It's fine. Oh, okay. These are things you can do in D&D. The world is yours. Uh, no, okay, she's not going to burn the cottage, though. She's going to burn you. <laughs> That's a very, very subtle difference. He's not wrong. Hezbollah. We'll be recasting Rosenblood midway through the session. It's fine. We'll find some. Parker. Parker will take up the mantle. That's what, hi- that's, that's what hip-hop is nowadays. I just wanted some fried chicken. I mean, yeah. It, it's bird. Oh, God. Good okay. afternoon, Shannon. What's your main Arby's. focus for today? We, never mind. <laughs> we do the podcast. <laughs> Do we? No, we're, we're not. We're five are minutes sure? in, and we most definitely have not. So. <laughs> all right, I'm, all right, let's go. I'm so sorry, podcast. Cody. Hezbollah, let's go. Clearly not. No, that's not it. <laughs> I, 
at some point I have to be right, right? Eventually I'll land on it, yes? At least it's not porn like when Tanner sent us that picture. Okay. You I remember mean, that. Why do you have TMZ open? <laughs> Shouldn't have said that out loud. Okay. It was, by the way, so again, for anyone listening, last, that's a joke. That never happened. Victory. I'm just... I'm, I'm I'm making oh, fun of things. No. Tanner never did that. That's just something we get grief about. Do. So yeah. I don't want anyone to get upset. Unfortunately. Let's just go. No. <laughs> yes. Shannon's a bit high today. <clears throat> sure. So again, at last we left our adventuring group. They had come up upon a small homestead, a very secluded place in a path off the trail i don't think anyone really expected to find this location but they have found an older looking woman someone who still looks quite capable of handling herself in part in no small part that is due to the long sword resting to the side of her hammock within hand's reach a silvery medallion is around her neck glinting in the sunlight it is about i would say in our time frame one to two in the afternoon so you've spent the day making your journey here and now the endeavor is what do you do? Let's pick it up. There's a person in a hammock outside of what you assume to be their house. They look to be peacefully resting. You're approximately, if I want to pull out this little ruler thing, just yeah. I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, so you're encroaching oh, upon her homestead. What do any of you wish to do? Say, alert yourselves, have at it. Uh, I don't remember. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say I don't remember what up to. Up to this point, I was, uh, I, I don't know if I should say what specifically Bacchus was doing, but I'm definitely keeping one hand out. Uh, I'm going to uh, be honest his right hand. really quick and but say, I don't gonna remember the how the last this one is very much going to be him keeping. I don't know why. Basically looking between the other two. Okay. Cause well, see the last thing I remember is we fought a harpy and then that's the last thing I, I don't, I, I don't know why I thought she was in the cave. This is this. how it ended. Just yeah. the way that Cody it's, described it's it. picking up we right up here. On her house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, then I'm just going to, uh, if everyone else is going to be cautious, unless Jenny no, no, wants no. to. This was the we'll look over at Jenny no. we and see if she wants to introduce us. We did that one last time. So. And since she does not, I'm just going to go ahead. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and just, as we walk toward it, just yell out, out, out at her. Are you the giant slayer? I mean, because he really doesn't have much tact, let's be honest. I mean, you're he a says what he says what he tweets. No, he doesn't. Okay. On that He tweets what he says. It's fine. He's a man of his tweets. Um you stir her awake. Clearly, she was. she's aware, you can tell just by her actions, that she is someone who is a light sleeper in these situations. She tries to put herself in a prepared defensive stance if anything were to encounter her. And this is the thing. She pops up pretty quickly, grabs the hilt of the long sword, and has it ready to draw. It looks skeptical at the four of you. Still at, uh, appearing, uh, if we're going by the map, unless Rosalind... Uh, I you am going to advance closer. slowly You're still about 40, toward her. feet away. She can again, see who you are in terms of general shapes, it's me. but she's not... And she knows just, not if you are friends just or Just once again say, you know, we're seeking a giant slayer. We have a problem with a giant, and we were told we could find one around here. Would that be you? It, it is and you. And then... And I'm going to override that decision, and I'm going to need well, to hear I, it. I, pa I pause only because I thought about doing a Joan Rivers voice here, and it's like, that may not be the best Damn idea it. for okay. anybody's listening pleasure, so I'll just go ahead and bypass gotcha. that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really can't. I, I'm nervous now. I've, I've got my own head. I, now I'm just thinking Hollywood Squares. I'm sorry. No, uh, She's going to call back to you. There is one that goes by that name here, yes. But what business well, we do I have involving myself in a fight of, with a giant? Who do uh, you Barkley, represent? Who it? do you wish for me to defend? Quickly, thank you, Jenny. If I Brickley. even care to do so. It's a good town. I think. Frickly. Frickly. You can... You can <laughs> the good good catch. Uh, you can tell that she's a, a little less apprehensive of you. She starts to to ease the grip on the sword, 
but you can tell that she's trying to be polite, but she's not going to give you much in the way of enthusiasm. Ah, uh, oh, I can't really I, be bothered to remember everything about it, but something about a, a giant and they to they need to you to kill it here. because Pray I guess you were something special. In Frickly, they've encountered a giant. <laughs> there is a giant by the name of Bone Crusher threatening to be back by noon tomorrow, wanting all the food they have. And we have already met one family that this Rosenblatt giant snaps has destroyed their fingers? town and Feathers just, some of their people. Yeah, that's it. What she We've said. We've come searching for you because the townspeople don't feel comfortable fighting it without someone with some experience. <laughs> Jaya starts laughing bitterly at this plea for help. <laughs> oh, so people don't care to find me for many moons. Uh, many years have I stayed here uh, peacefully, quietly, after my adventuring days were long behind me. And now, now the town wishes to come find me out of uh, what you would call retirement, I suppose, to, uh, to take up my mantle once more. Let me, let me tell you, the legend that runs in front of me, Giant Slayer, I don't know what they've said of you, or said to you of me, but this whole thought process of me as the one to end all giant slayers has become far exaggerated over the years. It is true, I did deliver the killing blow to a rampaging frost giant, but that was with a group of adventurers, much like you. There were four or five of us in mass against this creature. That creature had also taken on wounds from a previous battle with dwarves. Besides all that, though, that was many years ago. I was young. That's I was what... at my physical peak. Don't test, because I am quite capable with this longsword yet. But I'm not the woman I was 40 years ago. If I do this, if I care to take up this mission, I may as well kiss this homestead goodbye, because I don't know that I'd come back. I wouldn't even necessarily we need you to fight, but maybe a little direction on how to handle it would be welcome. <laughs> I don't know if you have found yourself in many adventures before, my friend, but being recruited in this manner rarely means you get to be a passive person on the sidelines. Typically, this kind of plea comes with the, the implied request that you lead a charge. Besides, the, the few times I have passed my way through Frickly for supplies... Uh, their hunters seem capable of doing that mission. Their farmers tend the land, and no one in that village strikes me as someone capable of defending themselves and against a giant. There's no implication here, woman. We come asking for your advice. We are not those people. It, it, she looks at you and, and does note, well... I will I will say my few times, a half-elf makes sense. She glances at Jenny and she glances at Tastra. Uh, your kind in this region makes sense. But she looks at Rosenblood and looks at Bacchus and says to the two of you, but a bird from on high. Uh, we don't see any from the star mounts in this region, or at least I'm sure those of Frickly don't. And half-orcs oh, don't God. always no. find their way no, this no, far no. into the Even high Even the half-orc so the half over there I will, is, I will grant is you that. far more refined than those hayseeds. No, coming to ask uh, for help we, we come from, we, we come Where here strictly we? for, I, I don't know, help? Helping them out of the goodness of our heart to be a hero? I, I don't know. I don't know why we were sent to, to find you anyway, and there's nothing that you can do that we can't do. At that challenge specifically, uh, Rosenblood, you're close enough and your eyesight is sharp enough. You see a bit of a glint in her eye, a bit of a fire, if you would. Y you would probably interpret it to be uh, someone being challenged to to test her might, to borrow a phrase from Mortal Kombat. There's still something there, and you specifically notice it, that there may be something in her. And she, she chuckles a little bit, not as bitterly this time, but more... Partly offended, partly amused, and says, oh, so you can. Uh, you, specifically, uh, Eagle 
whatever you wish to call yourself. You want to dirty your feathers amongst common folk and for Nor is it something reason. that I would dirty my feathers uh, again, with, I but many from the I, I don't know. There's something about these other two the behind me that one I just, as regal I'm a, I've as your become race tends to be. attached to, and I, I find it a little weird to say that myself because I'm not the kind that would attach himself to other beings, especially lesser ones, but for whatever reason, they find it noble to take this task on, and they clearly need my help as you know, my people are, well, the best at everything. So that they would ask me to come here and find you to do something that I can do so easily, I find a tad insulting. And I wonder why we're wasting our time talking to you then. Enough with the back. She laughs. I we don't have time for this. Will you help us or not? Gladly. I was this close to uh, well, challenging her blood, to a duel. You seem to be the, the one right to, been, uh, leading this charge. The right of, to do this. Uh, I'm glad discussion. you cut me off. I need you to make a because I feel like that would go poorly. I don't like. I don't like the way you're responding to this, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy, howdy! Well, that's why I was pushing my luck, but not pushing mm. it too far. There's a there's a level. Okay, I had to find my bonus there. I got a stat sheet in front of me that says it may that's not behoove 12. you to do so, and that's about all I'll tell you at the moment. <clears throat> that's it, it's okay. You can tell that you have, you have piqued her interest. But not quite enough. She looks and says, your, your offer, it, it is tempting. I'll admit, I'm not as strong as I used to be. And part of me is worried that someone's going to die because I am not the fighter I used to be. But it's still a hard pull to deny trying to protect people. I don't know if any of you have done this. Then listen to reason. Listen, then. Ultimately, you are protecting yourself because you know when and be better than be better than the bird. Quickly, he'll move right toward you next, and if not, then then soon. Bacchus, give me a uh, persuasion check. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Uh. Let's see here. Where are my dice? There they are. I forgot to open. Oh them. yeah, that is a good thing. Yeah. I probably should have those. <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen. It's a 13. No, 11. I got a minus one. Okay. It's an 11. Okay. Uh, much, much the same that uh, she wrote, rebuffed uh, Rosenblood. She gives you a little bit of a different viewpoint. Uh, you're not wrong. Giants do seem to find their way through to pillage and destroy and gather what they can. But seeing as visitors to this area of the forest are paltry at best most times. Um, I, I feel confident, in part due to the terrain and the weeping rock itself, that I wouldn't venture my way toward uh, seeing a giant anytime soon. And she looks... Uh, Bacchus then is going to turn his attention to Tasher and pretend and say, if, is this worth the rest of time? Is this what we came here for? Tasher is going to look at you and say, well, this is... A bit, a bit spunkier of a person than I thought I would be meeting here, destitute in the woods. So, so far her her desire to defend herself leaves me a little bit uh, ambitious to see what's going to happen. So Tasha's going to step forward, and she's going to plead, maybe somewhat of uh, a same vein as Bacchus. Uh, listen, Jaya, I am a person of the woods. This is not a region I venture too often. But I have, by proxy of being around these folk of Frickly, do find myself a little intrigued, maybe is the right word, to, to serve alongside them to defend this area. Uh, if only for self-preservation of me and my own, in part because, I'll be honest, at this point, this journey has led me to think that there may be some value in defending Frickly. And even the fact that we found you, by gods, I didn't think someone was going to be out here. I thought you were a rumor. If you come back to Frickley, you may inspire a group of people to leave you out of the direct line of fire. If you can guide them, just as, as Bacchus said, if you can convince them to put up armaments, guide them in the ways that you may attack a giant indirectly, you may 
be the hero of this village yet, and also save yourself the trouble later on. And with the three of you kind of wearing her down, Rose and Blood, you started getting at the cracks. Bacchus, you implored to a certain part of her, and Tastra just came in and finished the job. Uh, the Giant Slayer is going to lean her sword against her, uh, the tree where the hammock is tied, and starts muttering, well, we all gotta die sometime, I guess. G- give me give me a few minutes. Let me, let me get myself ready. And with that, she goes into the cottage to start preparing herself. For combat. Okay. Scoff. So you have you have a few minutes amongst yourselves. You you can't imagine it's going to take care of long <laughs> Scoff. For someone who's been in combat before. But is there Just... anything you wish to do in this this brief respite of time? <laughs> Not in particular. Uh oh. No. What? <laughs> oh, scoff. That is not what I I heard. And I'm putting it in the Discord. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was the opening of this podcast. Zone. That's this fine. Is I'll, I'll have to, uh, Shannon, I'll have to skim through and uh, cut out a word there that I said at the beginning, so we'll be okay. Well, no, it's I, fine. No, you don't yeah, have to we'll, do that. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It's PG-13. It's true. So <laughs> after a few minutes, if you wish not to discuss amongst yourselves or ruminate, maybe just sit down and relax. I mean, it's at some point in time, I'm probably going to ask Tastra. She didn't know any more about this than we did, right? Like, was this what she was anticipating here? I, from what I gather, I can't imagine she did. I I feel like this is news to her as much as it was to us yesterday. I just want to know what she can accomplish that we we'll can't. See. I mean, some I hope she doesn't show all supposed hero from however long ago who has isolated not herself not in a cabin anything. in the middle of the woods probably hasn't seen combat in God knows how long, and we don't even know if she's as good as they say she was, and we're relying on her to defend this town when maybe that's what we need maybe i did it on purpose maybe i'm not just a giant beak i have a feeling beak I have a beak feeling is, if beak you is my asking, turn she's going or, uh, to show you well i don't rule out any possibilities <laughs> maybe maybe it's nice that it's nice that even you consider that there's a possibility that you are though. <laughs> as the uh, the lovely conversation between the two of you continue, as seems to often be the case when an NPC is taking care of business, you're to see Jaya come out uh, armed to the teeth. She's got her full armor, a heavy crossbow across her back. She's got a long sword and a short sword at her belt. You hear the full armor kind of clink and clack a little bit as she comes out the door, but she kneels down in front of her homestead and just mutters a couple words to herself saying, well, (laughs) it's been fun being here for a while. May whomever finds you next receive a warm home. With that, she stands up. It's a good thing. This it's a good thing. This isn't a stealth mission. It's true. Uh, to, to peel back the curtain a little bit, this is, uh, she's a veteran in terms of what would be in, in D&D standards. She's got heavy splint armor. Okay. So, narrow vertical strips of metal riveted to a backing of leather. Yeah, she's uh, not going to be a sneaky type. So, she gathers herself and walks toward the group. Rosenbud says, well, is going to give her a friendly bird up me out of bed and say, lunch. now that's more like it. Now you look like a hero. finding your way back to Frickley and see if we can get these humble folk prepared for a battle. She gives you a, a curt glance. She's not still very excited. You can tell she's being more sarcastic about this than anything. But she starts taking the lead from Tastra and says, Okay, let's let's make our Yeet. way there. And unless there's anything else you wish to inquire, you're going to be on your way back to town. Nope. Let's get the show on the road. All right. No, I have. Yeah. And then the four of you. Yeah. Well, excuse me, the five of you now that you have an extra compatriot. And this has become a much larger party than I think anybody anticipated at the beginning of this. The five of the five of you start yes. finding your way through. And amongst your journeys, uh, there is a specific large tree that stands before you. 
specifically a, a tree that doesn't feel like it fits in this region, which seems to be something you've encountered a fair amount of, in part because rather than cherries Uh-oh. hanging off of this tree, as the breeze blows slightly, you see what looks like I think it's a good idea. red light going through the branches. You guys are going to get mad at me if I go look at the tree, aren't you? <laughs> uh, back looks to Tastra and says, Druid? Uh, I can't control myself. Uh, Tastra shakes her head and says, I don't think so. Although the pyramid... Oh, I'm not. No, 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 no. I was going to let the uh, the half-elf do it. Go, go. He pushes her forward with his little feathers. Oh, you're going to roll up on this bad boy? I didn't. I thought it was a great idea. You got mad at me Gaia? last time. <laughs> Maybe you should inquire with the one who lives around here before you make that move. Jaya's gonna look at you. Jaya's gonna look at you all and say, "Would you say that this tree to is this too anymore, large to be here for that small period of time, or is that accurate?" And admittedly, I don't know much about ago, nature. This wasn't a tree that I saw. Most definitely, trees don't grow yeah, that Bacchus fast. Would even no, know that much. no, my you know what this reminds me of, Bacchus. This reminds me of that and time you tried to drill a hole in your I own don't head. Know of anything that glints with, with red light, like that in nature. Not that I've seen. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, once yeah, again well, just kind of nudge Jenny so. forward with my with my wing, like you know, I'm gonna take back some of those things I said about you. <laughs> I think you should go check Part out the it. tree. You look very interesting, interested. Well then, don't waste You're time talking about it. Go, go, go! He go says he tree, pushes you? her forward. I mean, I want to check out the tree, Jenny? but we're also kind of on a mission here. Jenny, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, Jenny, if you do wish to approach closer, <laughs> Jen, no, 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 there it is, uh, <laughs> Jenny. If you care to approach closer, I can tell you what looks to be on those branches. I will go a little bit closer, but not terribly close. Okay. What do you see? At this juncture, I can tell you that it looks to be that like, clusters of small like roots gem gems? are hanging off the branches of this tree. Alright, so now Rosenblood is going to walk hmm. past Jenny up to it. They look like gemstones. <laughs> Ruby, Ruby sparkling in his eyes. Like Ruby. Hey, look, I like jewels. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I okay. You said you weren't a crow. Oh. And yet here he goes after something. Yeah. Well, so Rosenblood I, looks I, back and says, okay, I, I, I guess we're the only ones curious about a tree that has jewels growing from it. No one else is thinks this could be like important. Tastra's going to look at you and Jenny both and say, first of all, the last time we encountered something unique in the forest, it, you almost unleashed some wintry beasts. Second of all, if anything has been taught to me in my life, that's, that's a, a good theory. Give her an extra. Uh, don't typically mess with things. Yeah, give her an extra point for that. Yeah. Well, I mess with things I don't understand all the time. That's how you learn to yeah. understand them. That's her. Give her an extra MO. chip, Hunter. <laughs> the reason she doesn't have a soul anymore. Right. That's yeah. <laughs> Give her an extra point. A Benny. There just, it is. Yeah. Just out of indignant. <laughs> a Benny for Jenny. Go closer to the tree. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I, I will say that there may be some inspiration in it for you at some point, but okay. A Benny? Yeah, for Jenny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I knew you were trying to think of a specific term. All right. Well, that that is natural. very much a, like I said, his, his prior experience <laughs> with magic has never really been good. My boy. Um, so, no, he's he's very content <laughs> to go, oh, that's not supposed to be here. <laughs> Moving on. What? There it is. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> ain't right, boy. All right. So, Jenny, as you as you approach no! the tree, Rosenblood, are you going to do the same? I'm going to power through. Or, what do you Bro- want to do? 
toward the tree? Are you are frozen you blood is just going to flat it? out grab one, one of the wounds. Out? What is your what is your thought process as you approach this tree? Look, um, I'm just the way I play this character is that he's he's it a little bit more. He's very uh, what is the term? Touch, uh, but... yeah, he's an ambitious bird, and uh, all of these things. Mm, he's a okay. total well, he's then... a total beak. Ambitious, overzealous, loose. <laughs> okay, then uh, two separate rolls. Jenny, I need an intelligence check from you. Okay. Rose and blood, I need a constitution Let's keep check going. from you. All right, you said a constitution check, Cody. What? 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 <laughs> he, says, yeah. he, he said to yeet his way out. Okay. Eighteen for my yeah. cons. Yes. Yep, Jenny, I need intelligence from you, Rose and Blood, Constitution from you. Okay. 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 Ouch. Six. <laughs> I'm All being right. real dumb today. Jenny, you can't tell anything about these rubies. Other you just it's, 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 it's a ruby tree. You never heard of it before, <laughs> but you know, you haven't really ventured out in the woods that much. Maybe these are things that are real. Uh Rose and Blood, uh, you do pluck this ruby off the tree, and you seem to be okay. Uh, but you try to kind of feel about the ruby in your hand. You give it a quick squeeze, and that ruby and he's crushes just, in your what hand. What the bloody hell? You open up I'm going to show it to Jenny. And there's what do you make of this? Hit and the juice of a oh, cherry. Oh, that's the worst. Now staining Is this a big black horse on a cherry tree? No. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Is it a... <laughs> it looks like a cherry. <laughs> no one did. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to... Raise my wing up towards the others and say, I, what is this? Kate Tunstall is somewhere in the Tijaya. distance. Her ears are burning. Someone mentioned my song. That's, that's more accurate. Hmm. So why Chaya would a, laugh a little bit and this says, why well, would this tree have rubies hidden with hidden even the cherry Star pits in them? That doesn't make any sense. I am a confused bird. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm gonna look back at Bacchus. I have a feeling Bacchus. this isn't a cherry or a, a ruby tree. Pardon. I have a feeling somebody, something, is trying to play tricks on us. So it's all illusions. I told you not to go over there, Jeez. but Bacchus is now definitely gonna pull his second hand axe and keep himself uh, dual. I'm not a about. Uh, Jenny, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, I I squeezed the ruby, While you're doing and it, that, yeah, my, uh, it turned out to be just a cherry on the inside. Second. Did I miss? So the uh, dice don't like me one of them today. squeezed something and it broke yeah. and it squished like a cherry. But yes, the one of the rubies. But but yeah. Okay, so it just looks like a ruby. That's what we're guessing. So that's just a cherry. So All just right, leave Jenny. that cherry alone. <laughs> you ain't got to keep I that cherry. I rolled a lousy eight. You did. You ro rolled an eight. And so now you are going to feel <laughs> this girl, odd sensation the girl's got of someone nuts. sticking a wet finger inside of your ear. Ew. Kind of like a childhood prank. What? I'm going to swat at my ear. This is the willy tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was unnerving. Away from Who's there? Tree. This is dumb. All right. Let's just go. Okay. <laughs> You're going to hear a little bit. You don't see anything, but you hear a little bit of a giggle as you start walking away from this tree. All right. Who's there? <laughs> I don't know what you else hear, to do. <laughs> you hear uh, a little bit of a chuckle again, but you don't see anything. <laughs> Jaya has now drawn her, drawn her long sword as well, and she is quick to point out, if you can't well, I've already see stained it, my feathers, so I would be inclined to agree with you. Let's go. This is magic, and I don't keep your think secrets it's best for us to mess with magic if we can help it. And then I go. I got you. I'm way ahead of you. Way ahead of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, sorry, all I can think of is the, is the Lord of the Rings. Oh, I gotta plug my headset in. You guys keep going. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's true. That that is something you can choose to do if you so wish. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bacchus, I know you've mentioned you don't really care to do anything toward the tree. Do you wish to do anything? Nope. No, I am following the lead of anybody who is considering this to be cautious, <laughs> which seems to be the two people who got us here in the first place. Sounds like a good plan to me. Jenny, any other uh, endeavors toward the tree? No, I'm grossed out. I want to leave. <laughs> okay. Then you guys are. I feel, are I feel like we're missing a major from, opportunity to mess with this tree, uh, though. Which direct cardinal directions? I guess we're. Going like, I feel like there's something west here. To east, as you go back to town. So yeah. Yes. That is something you can do if you so wish. Shannon feels like he's missing an opportunity. Because Rosenblood is just content to like move on, and does, he's always does, looking for the next big thing. Minute, he's always looking for his next fix. Does Rosenblood feel um, like he's missing the, an opportunity? The, or you know, Shannon as you know, Hunter, since you hosted the fix, you know, for adventure, for adventure. But uh, Shannon is is thinking like, man, I wonder what's up with this tree. <laughs> so, is Rosenblood a heroin addict? <laughs> 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 oh i certainly i but it just to to yeah if we're gonna drop out of character for a second i know there's definitely off with that tree uh it's my character would not do that my character is not uh, Ro- as magic, i said rosenblatt gets bored very easily him. he's uh yes, that's actually he's the hero the type story. he he wants so to he wants to go slay this giant because not engaged they, he feels like that will uh cement his um importance with everybody he's he's he, he wants to impress people but I am interested. I assumed Lindsay was going to be the one to like go up there and slap the tree around and say, hey, what are you? <laughs> Touche. Okay. All right. I'm satisfied. My ear got wet. That's gross. <laughs> I ain't going in there. All right. You guys can walk on and you will continue your journey, although as you do leave, you get a, a safe distance. You're about 40, 50 feet away from the tree in the opposite direction. You do hear one more of those brief childlike chuckles. You you a bee in, in your, out of the path. You a bee in your tree a bee, well, too. Enjoy your chuckling. And with that, away you go. <laughs> <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep your tree secrets. Leave people's ears alone. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. So you move forward. No, no worries. I suppose that anybody can muster after their previous encounter with a sentient tree, or at least something that strikes them as a sentient tree. You come across a clearing, and you know everything seems okay. It seems to be a pretty quiet for one of the first times during the, this trip. At, at least Tastra seems to be relaxing a little bit. She doesn't feel like there's anything going on here. Would it uh, would it be possible? She looks at the three of you and says, "No, I think we're okay." Would it be possible like, for no, Rosenblood to just kind of fly up I a little bit and scout the area from above? Like we've seen trip. enough weird stuff for this trip. I would like to do so. I'll say, "Hold on, I'll check and see if there's anything else weird anywhere around here." I'm gonna lift up into the sky and look around. Sure. Okay, so you're gonna take your path. Jaya is just gonna look at the three of you and say, "Well, that's not something <laughs> I expected out of him at this juncture. It seems to be uh, very, very much not helpful. It's sometimes any port in a storm a to get flighty. him up in the air. <laughs> flighty, mm, uh, I understood that reference. A little above the tree line, you know. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> All right, Rosenblood, you're gonna get up. Ah, uh, you don't have to go terribly far up. You know, maybe a hundred feet, hundred fifty feet. Not, uh, yeah, basically above the tree line." You see, for what it's worth, uh, you're starting to approach the forks that were mentioned earlier on. You see the Pyramid of Ice, where you encountered Babano previously, and you see the Stepping Stones. You also see on an opposite path uh, a bridge about the area where the Stepping Stones would have been. You see what looks to be a very soundly built bridge, much like what you saw at the Weeping Rock Falls. But you also see a fallen tree on that path as well. 
And then be- beyond those, you start to see what looks familiar to be Frickly, or at least what you imagine to be okay. the outskirts of Frickly. I'm going to land and tell everybody what, uh, what I saw up there. Buzzing about, you see some of the farmers in the far distance starting to maybe scramble. You see some specks starting to get together in the fields, but that's about it. Oh, yeah, we've we've already yeah we've already discussed this at length, trust me. Well, Jai is going to first look Old Toothy over there doesn't want to go anywhere near it. Ice Pyramid. Ice Pyramid. Old Toothy. Yeah, we passed an ice pyramid. Wait, hold on. I need to ask. I need to ask something. Did Hunter just say we all have teeth? Don't we? I'm Ray curious tell, about this. Do I have teeth? Am I? Do I have? Am I a bird with teeth? All, There's some like or, teeth, don't or something we? in it. Because Charlie. Because well, you know Charlie yes. had the bird with teeth, so I didn't know. Probably not. No, was, you are an exception. I believe you, you made fun of yourself there. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> That's what I assumed. Well, I was an expert though in bird law. There it is. There it is. No, as I understand it, Aracocra do not have teeth. You are a beaked species. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you follow. You follow up every meal with some rocks, so you can get all Look, that stuff. I'm, up I'm, cu- I'm currently eating a cinnamon twist from Taco Bell, <laughs> so I got my oh, might man, mute, but I'm cussing. You're a real noble ra- <laughs> rock eating. I got my mic muted. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> might mute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm entering with the gorilla monsoon. Would you stop? Uh, okay, great. Glad we've had He's this a real together, regal eagle. All right, so he comes down. That's right. Jaya is. is... <laughs> and Bobby's going to say no. Well, he's not going to say no. He's just going to keep riffing until the next commercial break. Um, Jaya does. D- despite herself, again, you kind of see that glint in her eye of wanting to just start some stuff. Uh, maybe it, she's becoming a little more restless. Maybe she's becoming a little more uh, wishful toward wanting to test her her skills yet. So she's kind of anxious about seeing this pyramid of ice. She's like, so so pyramid of ice. You said there was something in it. Yeah, we we came across this uh, druid that said he froze some frost sprites or something or other that were causing problems with his herb gathering. Hmm. They sound like well, Yo. they sound like easier targets. Uh, but, but but forgive me. Forgive me. I, I wish not to impose well, on Well, one path, we there's to. a very nice bridge, uh, but it looks like there's a tree Herman, over it. And then the other hunting, path, I believe was the wish to slippery us? rocks Which that Bacchus fell into and I didn't. Resistance. And if anyone tells you differently, they're a liar. Um, or we could fight the ice pyramid. I'm all up for that. No oppose? Okay. <laughs> well, no, no. Now, hold on. Okay. I'm not worried about myself, clearly. Uh, was gonna look but old, old fangs over there couldn't step saying. two feet on those things without Bird. slipping and falling. I'm afraid worried he'll break his neck if he has tree. to climb over a tree. You... you Tastra looks at Bacchus before you can even get a word in edgewise and acknowledges. Yeah. Those are wood cutting axes, yes? You assume correctly. Pray tell you have experience around trees, I assume. Okay. I see no reason to tempt fates with the river if we can find our way across a tree. I have to imagine even if this <laughs> tree <laughs> consumes an entire path, we can make our way around it fairly easily, yes? Bacchus is doing the uh, the Oprah gif of her just putting her hands up like, and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so Jaya's going to look at, at Jenny. D- do you want to go poke an ice pyramid, or do you want to go take on a tree? I mean, I've never seen the creatures that are in the pyramid, Say but it, again, we're kind of fighting up. daylight <laughs> and should probably get back to Frickly. That's and we fair. have people with axes that they can do the hard work with the tree. 
you're in a fight to break of dawn. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And seeing is, it has to take you terribly long. It's about, I would say, 2.33 in the afternoon. So there's still a few hours in this day to make it. So you will, oh, she'll give gladly. a gladly. He nod says with a tiny okay. little bow and he then, uh, uh, just kind of walks forward and says, this way, the way toward this kind of humming his way around. Uh, tell He's very pleasant. The way to this tree. <laughs> oh, please, tree. You a tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, ta- t- Tashra's going to look at Bacchus. Y'all see the say, leprechaun? Oh, he's pleasant now that he gets to take charge. <laughs> okay. Ye- it's we we humor him. Uh, <laughs> I feel my humor is running out, but okay. I did. <laughs> I was, I I was going to pull a Bacchus yeah. up to it. And, uh... <laughs> No, that was the other one. You want to know where the rubies were. Okay. All right, so if I'm going to lead. I'm going to... That's true. It's true. <laughs> a back is so... Oh. Oh, that so was we're, oh, we're, we're in a uh, a newish area, and I, and I couldn't see I'm everything. I'm scared Parker, too, stuff. I'm a little, <laughs> You know, I'm not stupid, so I'm going to have my bow kind of ready, you know, as I lead. I'm so That's just what leaders do. <laughs> Well, Cody, I just, I just, I just want to mention where you weren't part of that. I forget. Were Again, you a part of that first D and D session that we had when it was me, Hunter, and Branham, and Asa? You weren't a part okay. of that, right? So All you're right. gonna come. So from the very the, first character I ever played, and Honey, can, Honey, Honey can vouch for me on this. Um, oh my God, it was a. No, <laughs> no, uh-uh. I, it, my character was like a depressed, sorrow-filled, uh, was a, a dragon. <laughs> You're doing well today with the microphone. By dragon the way. Born. Yeah. So my first character muted, was a depressed, was. almost alcoholic, and I discovered very quickly that playing such a bleak character did nothing for my confidence as a person. So ever since, he was a dragon <laughs> so I need to play these more confident born characters to help me out. So yeah, there you go. There you go. Thank you. that's good get yourself in the mind space okay so the five of you being led by rosenblood come upon this huge tree much larger than any of the others you've seen in the forest thus far and that does include the ruby tree you encountered mere an hour hour and a half ago lying at an angle across the path i say rosenblood's gonna lick his lips a little bit go no keep it to yourself ripple of vast don't 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 want them to think you're lesser across the trunk you creepy mm, crawlies delicious <laughs> <laughs> i mean the good news is if it's that dead it shouldn't take me that long to hack through there you go i'm gonna go ahead tastra being being someone familiar with hunt or you know hunting woodland creatures and that ilk she's gonna do a nature check and she is going to find out and kind of tell you after taking a little bit of a closer look, she will take the lead slightly and kind of look back and say, it probably grew too big to support its own weight and kind of caved over. It seems like this is, again, a tree that doesn't survive in the woods this long without someone coming toward it. So it looks that it lived its life and the weight was too great to bear. So it has come And down. it's very much looking like, no, oh, sorry, uh, go ahead. She gets closer though. Oh no, yo, you go ahead just very much is looking like going around it's not going to be an easy option no as you can see you've got the branches extending all the way toward where the other tree oh no on how can we get past this impenetrable right fortress Rosenblatt said as he lifts up into the air and flies so over it and lands on the other side at least from this vantage point going okay. over is going to be the best uh, nay I think I have to do the I think I have to do the newspaper thing again do me a favor. Move your character. See if you can do that. This this is how you find out if you can. Yeet. Nay. Well, hold on. A- actually, hold yeah, on. Before he does that, and then he's going to fly up the and side, over again, the branch, and then I'm going to look do. forward. Is there anything across the way? Before I land like an idiot, is there anything I see that makes you me shall. go, maybe I shouldn't do that? Because I know this game. I wish we had more perception. <laughs> the plus three, plus two. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check. It's more yeet than skur. Bloop. A 
it's true. Uh, no, with that, you, you don't see anything beyond this tree. Uh, you look down and you see, again, the the ecosystem of insects. All right, then I'm going to yell back at my compatriot. It looks clear, the and then I'm going to land in front of it. On the outside as well as kind of you see the bark shifting on the inside. But no, beyond this tree, it looks like a fairly straight shot toward the bridge you saw earlier. I will. I say as I got my bow up and I'm looking around, eagle-eyed, eagle-eyed. Okay. I'll get to him. Then protect yourself over there while we take the time to get through it. All right. Tastra is going to, go, going to look at the three of you that remain and say, okay, with these creatures inside this tree, if we can avoid giving them much attention or drawing much attention, we should be okay. We might... If we don't attract with a loud noise, we might do okay to get over this and just move on. Jaya, on the other hand, you can tell at this juncture, she's what? annoyed enough that she's been rousted out of her home and potentially risking her life for this village that she just wants to stab something. She's like, no, 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 no. We attack what's inside this tree. We take care of that. You hear from I don't side. think sneaking, especially as she looks down at her armor and says, I don't think sneaking over a tree is going to benefit all of us that much, half health. <laughs> well we could always attempt to get to the other side and if you know you rouse something that is at least all in the same place Jaya looks kind of gives that a, a smirk and a half head tilt and says well it is six of one a half dozen of another uh, from the distance back, is, you're, you're, again, you're familiar with woodworking enough to have cut down a number of trees in your time. The trunk of this tree is about seven or eight feet mm -hmm. in diameter, but you can tell as you get up to it that it is very wet and rotten. But yeah. there seem to be divots in the bark to where okay. it looks like it's crossable if you wish to just go over it. Okay. So basically cutting through it is not really even going to be... It's not that it's not feasible, but it'd just be like hacking into pulp. Like yes. you're not going to be wood cutting here. It's just going to make a mess. Yeah, you're you're well, going to be then, sticking yeah, the blade you... of your axe to slush by the time the first second or yeah, third cut. And, okay, and that's just going to lead to rust. So yeah, no, it's going to be <laughs> more favorable for him to to want to try to you know get over this thing and and move on. And again, if we you know rouse something in the process, at least then we're all on the right side. And worst comes to worst, we can just make a break for it. Sure. Okay, so Tastra is of your mindset. Jenny, any thoughts? As, uh, Ooh. Jaya and Tastra kind of look at you. I mean, I'm not a woodcutter. I'm I'm inclined to follow suit. Okay. But you could light it on fire if necessary, so there's that. I mean, I can if we need me to. <laughs> That's Ta that broken tree bridge there. T Tastra's going to pull the... Uh, the King T'Challa hand gesture. We don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> the forest is generally not to be burned if we can help it. Small contained ones. An eight foot wet tree doesn't strike me as the it's, best it's thing for fuel. Wet. <laughs> yeah, it might make a lot of smoke. <laughs> With that, Tasha's just going to... Now, Tasha is going to look at Bacchus and Jenny and say, if you can, do so uh, swiftly, but also quietly. And she's going to look over at Jai and say, well, quickly if you can. Okay. And so for those of you that wish to cross over this tree, I need two rolls. I need an athletics check, and we'll do the second one once we see your athletics checks. Mm. Yay! Did you boo boo? Hmm. Let's see how bad I do this time. <laughs> I got a fifteen. And you don't have any athletic nope. modifier, do you? you don't. Nope. Wow. Nope. That's a four, folks. Yeah. <laughs> I fell in the tree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Bacchus, you're gonna do just fine. You're gonna clear we'll to see. the other side of this tree with relative issue, with relatively no issue. And Tasha's gonna do the same. Uh, with that though. For the two of you, I need a, and two being Tastra, I'll roll hers and back us. Yeah. I need a stealth check as well to see if you roused any of that attention. That yeah, everything went dark. Cody, you there? Oh, he's there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, what happened? I Did we blocked, lose Cody? Yeah. I heard. I heard Tastra was gonna roll, and then nothing. Yeah. He's also not yes. lighting up. Oh, hey, hi. 
Hello. Yeah, I've, I've, I, where did you lose me? After you said you Tatra said... was going to roll. Okay, uh, stealth check. My, my apologies. Okay, you need a stealth yeah. for me too, right? Okay. Yes, stealth from Bacchus, and I've rolled the stealth for uh, Tatra. 18. <laughs> okay, yeah, the two of you cross with zero issue. You're going to make your way across this tree, bound over to the other side just fine. Uh, Jenny, boy howdy, a four... <laughs> <laughs> I'm let just me tell fall you, right through that rod. Let me tell you, yeah. Let me tell you, you just barely missed that mark, but uh, you didn't do the worst. <laughs> Jenny, you're going to try to climb this tree. You're going to lose a bit of your your handhold. Something's going to kind of shift in the wood, and you're going to come down. You're still going to be on the opposite side of the tree as the other three, but you you land on your feet. Okay. Uh, Jaya rolled a nat one. Oh, oh no! So not only again, oh, no. it's been a while since she's done. No, you're on this side. You're with Jaya. Oh, you did not cross this tree safely. So <laughs> and not only Jaya hasn't worn this armor in a while, and not not only did she lose her footing, Clang. she's prone. <laughs> oh, that's good news. So she is going to be prone. That's for, what you want. Yeah. Uh, I'll hey, hey. a dot for prone. That's the one I have. And with that, uh, three creatures. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen him before, although this may appeal to the bird a little bit. You're going to get three giant centipedes coming out Ew. of this tree. Oh, good. So many legs. Mm-hmm. One of them is going to find its way toward Jaya specifically because she is prone. You know, she is a, an available target. Jenny, one of them's going to look toward you just because you kind of stirred it up <laughs> positioning on this grid. And one is going to still stand on top of the trunk and look toward the other three of you on the other side. Kind of confused as to, well, one, seeing a bird for the first time in a while. It doesn't feel great about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll in that 20 real quick, Cody. tree without issue and not yep. alerting its attention. Okay. So, let's roll for some initiative. See, it's 1D, 1D 20 plus uh, 3. I have a 2 Cause see, as oh, a yeah, as a man of shot, of pride, I have to be the best of what I do. So watch this twenty. Yeah, Fifteen. Fifteen. Damn it! If it had been a twenty, I'd have quit. I'd have quit the show. I'd have taken my money 13. and left. I don't have any money. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have. That's, okay. Hunter, stop. <laughs> just just like the, just like that. Stop. Right, though. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> like that I'm, glad, I'm glad we both had the same question there as well, Hunter. <laughs> Collaborate and listen. Would you just stop? <laughs> Would you just stop? <clears throat> All right, so <laughs> Rose and Blood's got 15. Hunter, you said you have... 15 also. 15 also? Okay. Jenny, you said you have 13. 13, Yes. Uh, what's your guys' Bacchus, I know your initiative bonus is plus two. Shannon's is plus three. So Mine's a higher. two. His yep. is a three. Yep, so yeah. you will be higher by one in the order so far. Let's roll for Tastra and Jaya. Well, Hunter, while he's doing that, I have to ask you. Um, I, I think you said you haven't played bonus. either game yet. Which one are you going to start with? Okay. So Jaya rolled a 19, so she might actually get to stand up early. Jeez. <clears throat> mm-hmm. You asked me that yesterday. I still don't know. I haven't decided. I, uh, I it depends on what kind of time I have. Right. Maybe punk today. takes a lot longer to get into today, honestly. And then this week, I think um, cyberpunk takes longer I to get into, cyberpunk like because, because the the, the beginning narrative is kind of slow. Talking about but once you hit a certain like, point, it's it, just it's a rocket playing. ship. Uh, I do want to play Watch Dogs too. What's that? Yeah. 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 Look out! Yeah. Wait, you loaded up with the rocket? Look how wrecked he is in that picture. I'm gonna have plenty of time coming up. Oh, I'm gonna have plenty of time coming up to. to I don't give like him that that centipede attempts. is first. So we'll see what happens. Ah, eh, well, you know, nature is a cruel mistress. Well, he rolled a yeah, skirt. Sure, it sure did. Let's play the feud. I sure did. Give so, me Jaya centipede and give me a uh, Jaya. That being said, let me pull things over here. Let me get my <laughs> DM screen on one side and you guys on the other, and let's play. <laughs> All right, so giant centipede. That's right. <laughs> Hundred people ask this question. Top four answers on the board. Show no Which more. one of you is going to die first? Uh, me. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Survey says. Why am I still hosting this show? <laughs> there it is. There it is. I want to host the show no more. All right. So Giant Centipede number one, just because you bothered it, Jenny, it's going to make its mm. way toward you. So it is going to try to attack you with a bite. Okay. And that is going to be... That's going to be enough to do damage. So let's do a bit of a roll here. Well, on a positive note, you're only going to take two damage, but I also need you to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Oh, Lindsay! Uh, Stop it! Stop! Not either. Okay, cool. Uh, it helps if I have the right window on top. Mm. Mm. Gosh, darn it, today! Boy, yeah. <laughs> It it does not like you. It doesn't. Is that recurring? You are going to take an additional. Uh, let's do four poison damage. Okay. I told you. No, it is just the once. At least in this. That's damage. She's rolling <clears throat> damage. Oh my gosh, Lindsay! Click on the correct thing. <laughs> And uh, do I get a reaction from doing damage? Cause I you say rebuck. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you have reactions, you can make. You you're starting can to certainly sound, do so. You then, yeah, you're starting to sound like cast, Shannon. Uh, yes. Hellish re rebuck on it for rebuck. doing damage on me. <laughs> yes, sure did. I did. Shut up. Hellish rebuck. Tell me. You have no room to talk today. <laughs> All right. So. Momentarily surrounded by hellish flames, the creature must take a deck saving throw. It takes 2d10 fire damage on a failed That's save. That's better. Or half as much as a successful one. So you go ahead and roll your 2d10. I'll roll the deck save for this thing. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it did not succeed. Let me pull, flip over to you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, no, that's a giant centipede, uh, wet or not, is going to be engulfed by these hellish flames and is going to <laughs> singe the tree bark thing? as it dissolves into ash. <laughs> you, you did it. 14 damage and fire is going to take care of that right quick and in a hurry. Good. Uh, Tastra's just kind of taken aback at the whole fire thing. Oh, yeah. She saw the Eldritch Blast, <laughs> seeing fire come from seemingly a wet tree and consuming a giant centipede. <laughs> is new to her, yes. Shen, have you ever, ever seen that picture of that Native American guy crying? <laughs> that's her. <laughs> <laughs> Just a single That's tear. Right <laughs> I could just hear that centipede saying, Hi, I'm centipede, and this you is the Jack feeling is Tastro's got her longbow pulled out that, you know what? This is the Hell Flame Challenge. Jenny ended it. Yeah. So, you know. It's centipede time. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Push. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't bite man. me. I'm Emperor Jenny. The centipedes must fight to please me. I was raised on the forest, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, cool. <laughs> she, she, looks at, she looks at Rowan and goes, Hey, aren't you that guy from Harvey <laughs> Birdman? This is this show's gimmick. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yo, at this rate, we might oh. make it to four sessions just because we're going to quote stuff in between. I love it. Why? He doesn't Why know. Is this show is gonna... We're so infused with Kenny Rogers. That centipede was on fire. He said, know. It's because we're in the woods. <laughs> oh. Cody, why did you take us to a steel mill? That centipede looked at that Jenny and said, Hot stuff coming through. You beat me to it. <laughs> well, you walk hard, you play hard. <laughs> You're sick. Jesus. You're oh, old. stop it. It's barely a tabletop show. <laughs> put it out put it out put it out <laughs> oh. the oh, test proved that was a lie <laughs> you thought you thought when we did this at 2 o'clock in the afternoon it was gonna go I smoother did. I did <laughs> you're right oh it may as well be 10 o'clock boy how the mighty have been led astray got all that armor on okay so Jaya oh. is going to spend her whole action to get up 
Because that's kind of what she has to do is prone. So all of her movement speed is getting up. Sure. And unless, uh, unless, yeah, but unless Hunter knows something about prone rules, I do not. But I believe it's going to take everything for her to get up. Not in 5e and 4e it would be action. Was it? Okay. I think it's different now. Yeah. But see, I thought it was all movement speed, but I've pulled it. I'm, yeah. Books are hard to read when there's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, so 4E, I mean, yeah. much like Star Wars was minor standard, basically, in Star Wars it's move standard, and prone that to get away up from prone, you had to spend your entire move action to do so. So then if you wanted to move again, you had to spend your action, standard yep. action. And that's what I'm seeing now. Okay, cool. I thought I, was, I thought I was wrong on that. I was like, well, I'm saying it doesn't sound right. So Jaya's up, so she has no movement speed, but she's going to look at number three over here. She wants to... Uh, it's like cleft it in twain if she can, who because does, now she's kind of just annoyed that she's who does been number put three work. Huh? <laughs> she's gonna find out who number three works for. That's right. So she draws that long sword and she's being, put that centipede um, in twain. Being skilled with it as she is, she gets two attacks with it. So oh. she is gonna swing at this thing. Yeah, she's she's gonna hit it both ways, uh, pretty easily. Nice. Uh, yeah. You know, she very much is. <laughs> and I, I don't even know if I need, really need to roll these dice because, yeah, cool. Just one. One of the two actions will take care of it. She is literally going to cut this thing. <laughs> uh, about two-thirds the body, she is going to cut left side from the right. She can't cut it in half, but she is going to cleave it oh, right snap, down he's the with his long sword. He's squishy. So he said, I don't want to roll these dice no more. No. Well, I mean, uh, as you can tell, these things are relatively squishy, and that one attack was enough to literally. eclipse its... A health, yes, yeah. So Jaya's <laughs> turn is spent, and she is taking care of it. So now Tashra gets a chance. And Hunter, Tashra I ran into gonna, him. I ran into she's him. She's not going to bother with the longbow because she's she's close enough. Dante, it's going to be a bit of a detriment. So she is he works at Walmart out. now. That was fine. He said hi. We talked for a little bit. He said he stopped by. I said, yeah, you've been gone for years, literally. Who's that? Oh yeah. How'd that go? After you put a hole in our wall. Yeah. Yeah, he just kind of showed up. He just stopped showing up. Ah, uh, you know, that kinda, that's kind yeah, of what happens. Yeah, boy, that was something. That was something. Well. I was there that day, too. Crab. Rose and Blood and Bacchus, I'm sorry to say you guys don't get to have any fun this time around because Tasha is going to take that dagger, <laughs> spin it in her hand, and much like she did with the giant crab, just stick it right through the, the head of the centipede. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna brain this thing, and she's gonna. Take this care is of the. It. Uh, it's just the scene of space of them around the. This is what uh, this is what Tasha yeah, saw right yeah, before she just, put the dagger in. <laughs> you rousted out these giant centipedes, and these giant centipedes <laughs> learned it was a mistake <laughs> that you guys took that with the first. Don't look. That's right. I... <laughs> 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 No! No! Lindsay, don't look. Caterpie! <laughs> it's a poor Caterpie Pokemon. Is so much more adorable than a centipede. <laughs> it's true. It's Do true. Not torture my poor Caterpie. Yeah, Tastra sent this centipede to its maker. So uh, you've got one centipede in ashes, one of them kind of twitching, two thirds cut in half from you know center mass, and one of them just splayed out in front of you with a dagger being pulled out of its head. So, combat's over, but Bacchus, I have to imagine the Rose and Blood both. Bacchus have something to say. <laughs> I'm just going to look at him. His axes in hand is just watching this go. This is under my breath, I'm just going to be like, delicious. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was great. <laughs> Nothing, let's go. You, you, got any, Giant. you got anything, bird guy? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Jaya is going to wipe off a little bit of the bark and the mud that she's got on herself. She's like, well, damn it. <laughs> Don't seem like I'm very agile in this armor, but at least I still know how to swing the damn sword. You guys are she still on the other it. side of the tree, though, right? Yes. So you're on a roll now. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no. This is just being gonna, muttered to herself more than anything. You're going to be on a roll when you trip and uh, roll Jenny, over you the tree. you want to go ahead and give another athletics roll? No, but I will. <laughs> I'm really not. It's all smooth sailing now. There you it is. I had a nine this time at least. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, both you and Jaya, uh, now having taken care of some of the wriggling inside the tree, have made your way across it safely. 
Rosenblatt, I'm going to move you forward just a square so I can get Jenny over here too. <laughs> no, I'm going to so, keep yes, my desires in check. the fallen tree. And thus, unless and Rosenblood wishes to... Creature. Must, unless Rosenblood wishes to clean you uh, up. Must give off the illusion of being a regal eagle, <laughs> as this was coined. <laughs> this was this vampire the mask. <laughs> like a half zombie. I hate that show. Right? I was going to say that. Ugh. <laughs> the regal eagle. All right, moral oral. All right, so. No, it's not good. So at, at this juncture, the five of you are free to to move forward. There's nothing standing in your way. You cross the bridge undeterred. And as it sits closer to sunset, I'd say it's about four or five o'clock in the afternoon, evening now. You make your way back to Frickley. And you're okay. you, you see Jaya kind of I can't imagine a, how tragic that must feel glance, a look over the town and acknowledge as well. I haven't been here in a while. Looks about the same as it was the last time I came through. Yeah. You're, you're here so we can keep it that way. Well, we shall see again. Uh, the armor wasn't my friend for that first encounter, but I- I'll admit to you, as uh, you seemed kind of excited to wield those axes, it did feel nice to, to break the long sword out for something other than hunting. <laughs> keep it sharp. going to need it. Let's head back to the uh, tavern in whatever it the was. Blue Duke. Yes. The Blue Duke, indeed. All right. Let me take care of one or two things here. So back to the Blue Duke you go. That will drag you there. You should be seeing it now. It's for Duke. Pause for Duke. Pause for Duke. <laughs> so there you're back is. in the Duke. And if you find your way into it, you're going to see that uh, you at least you know peel back the curtain. Everybody's kind of in the same place they were. It's a little more sparsely populated now, but there are some people, including Pello and Grieger, that are are gathered with some of their kind, trying to wait out what you guys do. Roseblood's gonna pipe up with his bird voice and yell out, "The hero Jaya has returned!" No lead their way and then look at Jai and say, "I'm not talking about her." Say, well, let's talking see about how me. this goes. Oh yeah, my cherry covered wings. And they see you first. Obviously, you're, you're a little bit taller. You have a wingspan where you can cover up. I'm sure you splayed your wings to do that. As soon as as your wing comes down, as soon as your wing comes down, and they see Jaya come into the place, uh, okay. Pello is going to look extremely excited. Uh, he his dream has come true in the sense of that he he was fearful. He didn't know if this person existed. Rosenblatt will go ahead and drag you, and we'll see what happens here. They're excited. To see, he is excited to see her. He is ecstatic, like jumping up and down on the bar. Just, yes, yes, she's real. She's here. The applause from the, the town starts to die down a little bit. And Grieger especially, you see the weight on his face as everyone kind of starts muttering in concern that this person is not the the picture of health, the picture of of strength to lead us into combat that they expected. Grieger and some of the farmers still look a little bit wary about what to do. Uh, Tastra, for her credit, she has a bit of a, a smile on her face. I, you, you picture that, or you kind of pick up that this journey out to find Jaya has has lifted her spirits a little bit. She, if you recall, as you were leaving this place, she was doing this for the kicks and grins and thought her crew could leave by night without issue. But after, especially after you battled what were weaker, but still an opponent that can cause some damage in these centipedes, you see a smile come across her face because, well, pray tell if Jaya and Jenny's word are true on how Jaya cleft that one in twain, she's someone who can still hold her own enough. So you five come in, and Pello is, again, bouncing up and down. He's, ah, the mo- 
Family heirlooms well delivered. I got it for you. We will take care of that. Albeit, we do have the small matter of protecting the town to take care of, but I'm just happy that everybody's here. And Jaya, Jaya Giant Slayer, in our midst, we haven't seen you in many moons. My father told me that you were someone that came through occasionally, but I haven't had the chance to see you myself. This is exciting. Jaya kind of motions with her hands a little bit, kind of trying to temper the expectations. I... The the thirst for adventure still pumps lightly in my veins, but let's let's not get that excited. I'm still worried. I I am elder in years. I don't necessarily feel that I'm gonna make it out of this alive. But uh, you've lit a fire under me. She looks at back. She look at you, Bacchus, and give a give a nod, kind of a a half hearted smile, because you you can see that. Now that she's come into this group and seen both the concern about her age, but also the excitement from some, she's starting, her confidence is wavering a little bit in terms of her survivability. The, the giant centipedes gave her a bit of a boost. still wielding that sword. So, Tastra is going to meet with the, the hunters in this group, and she will quickly kind of powwow with the ones that remain, and you, you see a few of them dart out the door. They're going to make their way out. Uh, you you assume to go alert somebody, and Tastra turns to Pello at the bar to Grigor, and she's going to say, "Well, Pello, despite your best efforts, uh, credit to to these people with whom I have traveled to retrieve the Giant Slayer. Uh, we will stay. I am sending the hunters to to gather up our ranks." Uh, we will we will not face this giant head on. Well, that is not our skill set. That is not our endeavor. But we have short bows, and we are a skilled people with them. We are going to assist in warding off this giant from your town. It's been enough of a journey for me to learn that there is something here to protect still yet, even if it's just the portion of the forest that I and my kind hunt. This town will have some protection. Is that a smile on your face, or Grigor? No, from Bacchus to particularly, if, if he's he's been watching the listening station and he grins. But <laughs> Rosenblood looks over at a glass at his reflection and tries to smile well, and goes, "Ah, damn it!" <laughs> at least they can tell when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Amidst your laughter. Though, Bacchus, as you move toward the group, as you hear the conversation happening, you see that Grigor is still a, a bit hesitant. He's not hes not feeling as confident. He looks at Pele, looks at Tasher, and he looks over at Jaya across the way and mentions to the two of them, and probably loudly enough for you guys and Jaya to hear that that's all well and good. I'm glad the, the, the hunters are staying. Your, your help is appreciated, but... We are but hunt. We are not hunters. We are but farming folk. We don't have much in the way of ability to defend this place. And looking at this giant slayer, I don't know that our defenses will be resolute enough to protect us still yet. I, I speak for the farming families in which we are not fully confident, even with word from the Bright Hearths from their previous town. We 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 know what was done when the giant slayer was appeased or attempted to be appeased, but we won't take the path of Scorton. We won't appease it, but I don't know if we care to stay here and save it either. Pello, how much time do we have? Pello looks out some of the windows outside and says, well, it's, it's later evening. Now I would say if we stay the entire time awake to do this, we've got about 16 hours or so. Until this happens, I would say about a, a half a day and some extra hours to do this. Mind you, I'm sure some of us would care to get some rest if we're going to fight for our <laughs> lives, potentially. So I would say we probably have about 10 hours to prepare. Bacchus uh, pulls hand out in the way, but just in a very uh, practiced motion. Pulls it from his belt, catches it very near the the uh, head of the axe itself. As to Grigor specifically, then the work begins now. Get your best people together. Training starts at dawn. Uh, give me a, per, uh, a persuasion check. Okay. 
That's probably not super great. 11 total? Ah. Uh, it's enough for him to look at you and say, half work, your confidence is encouraging, at least for small groups. But I, I tell you this, uh, training is likely not going to be the way in which we succeed. If if we stay. <laughs> Go ahead. We farmers have a better skill set to maybe set traps with these hunters. Any way to uh, trip up, maybe slow this giant rather than confront it head on. Bacchus is looking at his axe <clears throat> as he starts saying this. He's looking it over and inspecting it before he, about halfway through, he turns to look at him. He's <laughs> sure. It's not about the capability. It's about the camaraderie. Be that as it may, you don't build much camaraderie in a field with three or four other people focused on picking up fruits and cotton and things of that ilk. Alas, we will stay to defend this town. It may not be head on, but we will we will help prepare the land for the arrival of this giant. And with that, Pello is going to pop up and say, good, I've got the farmers, we've got the hunters, you guys brought the giant slayer, now let's talk planning. This giant, the last time he came, he came through Windmill Field. Now, for those of you that have shown up in the last couple of days, there's no windmill left. He kind of took that down when he walked across. The giant didn't really care for that. But it is a fallow field on the outside of town, several hundred feet of distance for us. We will know if he comes the same way he came the first time. We will know with plenty heads up that he is coming. It's a flat piece of earth. We will see him on the horizon. That means we have, if we position the hunters on the forest line out in the woods or the tree line, we have some arrows and some bows that can commit to long range damage. We've got farmers. They say they're willing to put traps, but that's where I look to you. He looks at Bacchus and he looks at Jaya and says, do you have plans? Have you done this before? Do you know of setting traps? Bacchus, before you can even get into it, Jaya is going to laugh and say, no, 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 no. Uh, I am not a tactician. I am a warrior. Uh, I know basic battle plans. You create a couple of trip wires or something that can slow down this giant, perhaps knock it down while the volley of arrows comes in. You may be able to do some hefty damage to him. Uh, that is about the best I know to do. If you can soften him up, I can take him on head on. I might give you 30 seconds before he takes me down. Yes, yeah, basically in, in Rispel's question, he was just going to respond. I am the trap. It was Montague who led the sightings. And I can uh, scout. I can get above I've the trees and watch for when this giant's approaching, did, and I can do way better than any hunter you've got at comes. letting you know when it's uh, getting closer to town. Well, Pello looks. I appreciate the insight from, from you, Giant Slayer, and you, Bacchus. Uh, Rose and Blood, that is the best vantage point we're going to have as someone in, in the skies, so to speak. Jenny, do you proffer anything in the way of, of insight with with uh, traps? Do you have anything you've done in your, your myriad travels? Not particularly. I am more of a studier than a initiating attack, I guess would be a good way of putting it. Okay. But I can hold my own. Then it's going to be uh, Pello looking over to Tastra, looking over to Grigor and says, well, it sounds like we have our plan. For you farmers, uh, set your traps. D do me this. Gather all the shovels you have, all the work implements that you have. Let us, we have woods around us. Let's grab some tree branches, some leaves. Let's create a couple of pits that he may may trip into or at least stumble him along the way. He is not uh, an astute mover. He's not an astute observer. I think we could maybe get him a little bit taken care of 
and maybe a couple of moments delay for these, and he gestures to the battle party now, these folks to get up on him and cause some trouble. Perhaps maybe a, a stretched wire, a stretched rope across the field. If we can gather enough rope to make one of those, he, we, can, we can knock him down and really take it to him. I don't know much in the way of anything. I know my skill set lies and in, what this, of, in this inn. My skill do you set have any lies in this explosives? Bar. I know not much anything else, you know, but I can. I can me help being above him, I'm sure I could perhaps drop said explosive down. onto that's, giant that's stupid head. As much as I appreciate your fervor, no, we're we're a simple town. There's not much in the way of of explosions what about salt? or explosions that we cause. We are we typically light fires with kindling and watch them turn into a bonfire. We don't do much in the way of causing explosions elsewhere. And he's gonna look over at Jenny. Isn't there something about you he can salt a giant and the, he shrivels up? The uh, fireplace and looks back at you and says, "We we work in meats, but of course, we Sorry. salt." I always get those confused. Uh, That's not a bad idea. Snails. I could, uh, if you could distract him, perhaps I could get close enough to, I, I don't know, salt his eyes or jab yeah, you could spears into his salt. eyes or exactly. something. Well, Jenny is going to get a look from Tastra. Tastra's going to say, don't don't you have a bag of sand? Yes, but salt would sting more. I, I don't think we're looking to do damage. I think we're looking <laughs> to slow him down. I feel like the rest of your group, as she gestures to Bacchus and Rosenblood and Jaya, they're going to be doing the, the hurt. Jenny, I think can I borrow your pocket sand? my group to help chip in a bit, but I feel as though anything I'll you replenish can do it. to... Uh, slow him down to impede his it's, progress. He just he takes the bag and just looks over at back and says it's it's sand. Yeah. Don't use all of it. Or <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> it's just sand. It's <laughs> I love the fact that it's just like you guys have crossed uh, what two rivers at this point, or at least you've been around enough. Rosenblatt's going to look at Jenny and say, "This is this is somewhere. (laughs) This is just sand, right? You didn't like burn someone to ashes and kept them in this pouch, did you?" Sand, it'll be fine. (laughs) I require sand specifically for things I need it for. (laughs) Is Hunter completely robotic to anybody else, or is it just me? Okay. Just making sure. It's sand, but it is for rituals. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that was great. Yes. Yes, have some. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. But yes, uh, if we're, if we're going to go, if we're going to do the sand route, it sounds like you guys have some of your plans put together. Uh, this, this night uh, as it is approaching toward, it sounds good. Now we can hear you. As it approaches about 7 p.m. in in the uh, early e- or late evening, early night, uh, you see the hunters prepare themselves. Tastra gives a firm handshake to back his right arrows up. and blood and says, you may not see me tomorrow, but you will see our arrows from the distance. Safety. As, and, as friends. Well, health to He you says he extends his wing. You can gather from this. <laughs> Close enough for me. I. We will be uh, as as fighting compatriots. Tastra will say. All right. So she give, she gives you both a firm greeting. Farewell. He gives a salute. She says we will we will be on our positions on the side of this field at noon. Should something occur differently, she looks at Rosenblood. Alert us. And with that, the the hunters make their way out. The group and, and T- Tastra is going to go, uh, assuming she's going to gather whomever she has and get battle plans put in place for them to skirt this field. Grigor is going to look at, at those remaining in this inn. He's going to look at Pello and say, well, Halfling, whatever shovels you have, bring them out. 
We'll start digging holes. We'll start gathering leaves. We've got enough rope between the farmers in this village, I think, to make a tripwire or two. We'll slow this thing down as best we can, but I pray for all of our sakes, and especially yours, that, that this plan works. And he gives a, a flat look to the giant slayer, who responds in kind, kind of just looks at him, and says, Okay, we shall be off. And the hunters go, Pello looks at him and says, This is, this is all we've got. You, you knew this from the beginning. I'm not leaving. This is the best plan I had, and this is the one I'm going to go with. The giant slayers here. I don't know what I could do. The best I think they're good. Have. Unless you guys have anything to chip in with the farmers, they they have their their mission aligned out. All right. The Grigor and company are going to find their way out of here. The farmers, the um, bright hearths, are going to go with. Angor, his brother, he's going to find his way out toward that. And Pella looks at the remaining of you and says, well, again, beyond the, the 200, or beyond the uh, family heirlooms I have and what value they may give to you, I don't have much to offer other than supplies and, well, uh, a night's stay in this inn. I feel it's probably best that once you feel that you retire, do. that you, you do what you can to be prepared. Noon will likely come its way toward us a lot faster than I think any of us hope. Agreed. Especially drink, Rosenblood says, and kind of pounds his wing on the uh, on the counter. Jaya does the same. Yeah, if we're going to be having an early morning, I agree on that. We, we are a well-ailed machine. You see a, a pair of tankers slide out from the barkeep towards you, so <laughs> you both will be well-ailed. Well Rosenblood raises his glass and just says, The killing a giant! So. There you go. Mmm. Hello, smiles in confidence as he steps down off the bar on a bar stool and then goes to prepare the rooms. And that is, uh, that's where this evening will re retire. Uh, we will, if we were doing a film scene, we'll fade to black as you guys celebrate at the bar, perhaps. She just can't uh, hold the liquor like she used Jaya's to. Heart. She gives the smile. She tries to chip in in her adventure. She's a lightweight now. She remembers how, but also she's still a bit hesitant. She doesn't <laughs> quite know what the next day is going to bring. I think Rosenblood's going to wake up and some guy's going to smack him on his bird ass and say, how's that ass feeling? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. All right, uh, Fade to Black is going to fade back in. It is about 8 a.m. now. Uh, you smell food being cooked in the, the kitchen area. The fire is probably preparing some fine meats, some mm -hmm. fine grains to prepare you for the day. Uh, as the three of you, or the, yeah, the three of you, I assume Jenny also, also you're a, to take shelter. Also, somewhere. you're a liar. Yes. Yes, I meant to bring this up. There was a couple shows I ago yes. where yeah, I believe it was Cody and I were asking up. you something okay. and Stupid we didn't hear internet. anything. And then so, a little bit after that, you said, I said yes. And we we're like, oh, okay, you didn't go through I'm on the uh, thing. Well, I listened to the recording and you never said anything. Mm -mm, no, sir. So did I, and I also heard me say yes, so hush your it's mouth. I cannot speak to this one way or another. That's right, that's right, this is the language that she speaks. That's right, so if the, so if the three of you do arise just... to prepare yourselves for the day, you will see Jaya sitting at the bar, just eating quietly, sullenly, kind of keeping to herself. Well, at least drinking hard or hardly drinking? No, no. If if you come up to her, you don't smell alcohol on her breath. She's drinking whatever the, the <laughs> beverage of choice is with the lowest level of inebriation. 
Mm, hardly drinking. <laughs> I, uh, I want to I stab the Eric Oker. <laughs> Can I? I don't even have a stabbing weapon. <laughs> Can I just one time just poke, poke? No. You just stab him when you're here. You're a very it's negative true. person. No, I, I, if, if have you I, tried to be I maybe more day, positive? My, uh, I mean, today, I, I, do it with as some of the very few flaws, obviously, I, I don't like know. The, how that feels, but from what I understand, you're a quite legendary hero, and and you seem to hold yourself very well. Why be so down on yourself? This is your chance to to relive that 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 feeling, that rush, that heroism that I know you still feel in your veins. So perk up and smile. Today is going to be a good day. She looks at you and she says, Bird, I don't quite know how you and your kind age, but if you look at these other human-like creatures, you know that our apex is in the earlier part of our lives. For me, that was many sunrises and sunsets ago. I have reached an area of my life in which that doesn't really strike me. I don't have the clearest of memories of those days gone by. Many years now, it's been me in my cottage hunting. For and how satisfying is it to sit alone in your cabin watching myself. the days I, waste I away while you do nothing but self sustain? Where now you have a chance woman, to be something woman. again. I would say that this will be a good day for you. And also, for those of you curious, this is what it looks like when our kind gets old. I put it in the Discord. It's not a pretty sight. <laughs> it's it's had a rough day molting Uh, she looks and says well at least when i was by myself no one and imagine how many people or anyone else that i i cared to see go but alas if it is the day going out on my feet will be a good way to die Birdman he kind of thinks about it for a second and her, nods and just kind of sits down quietly. Prepare on her own terms. We brought her here for that purpose. We can at least give her that much. Uh, breakfast and see about how you going about healing these last about three hits left of mine. This giant is slated to arrive. Do any of you have any preparations okay. you wish to make? Any just special sure. activities? You wish to undertake. Oh, you're good. I just want to double check. Yeah, then bre- I just want to order some breakfast. Oh, oh my yeah. apologies. Yeah. No, you guys slept we overnight. Rested. Yeah, you get a long rest. Yes. Yeah, I didn't say that explicitly. That's my fault. Yep. Oh, shoot. I just clicked off of my sheet. <laughs> yes, and I refresh the sheets, and I see that Bacchus only has two hit points, and Jenny has eight. I'm like, did I goof something up here? No, I got no. two. I was adding one at 24, so I pumped it back up to 25. It should be good now. And then uh, I was resetting my uh, okay. my rush. I had done one, and they're back. I am to, using digital back to two now. So right, yeah, should be good. Yeah, which no, no, no I'm using DDB. It's very you're handy. Not using the digital there format. It's your health is back to its standard HP. Oh, are you using one too? Okay, I didn't know if you're using D&D Beyond or if you're using the sheet. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, well, then I wish I would have grabbed your character. Alas, never mind. Okay, so if you I are all rested up... I still joined the campaign. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are all rested up and uh, preparing to go, uh, you go about your activities, and Pello looks at the, the four of you hold up, standing at the hold bar. Hold up my, says, my breakfast and say, I'll eat to that. Uh, the sun is almost at its highest point in the sky, I'd say. Uh, it, it is Lead time away. we meet our fate. Jolly is the best way to describe it. <laughs> oh, Are we going to get it in this session? Okay. So if that is if that is how this is going to go, then let us take you to the battlefield. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, but Hunter always says that about Star Wars too. Uh, <laughs> and then we do two hours of combat. We've got a peel back to curtain about 20 minutes left. <laughs> I think that could... Uh, could get something going. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> he's he's yeah. he's I mean, almost saying. If you guys a... crash a headhunter in this session, you know we'll stretch it out one more time. Who knows? 
So uh, consider this right side of the map. I didn't put any text for it, but as you see my black circle, that is toward Frickley. So this is closer to where the gates would be. This is the horizon from which you imagine, <laughs> or at least according to Pello, is where this giant is supposed to arise. And as the sun hits its highest peak in the sun, sky, uh, arise, you see that giant. Yep, giant you arise. see that he is correct. This giant is in fact here. Uh, just for, for purposes, I'm going to go ahead. If you drew the line across, this map is oh, 150 so feet wide in terms of Is this of all open field or are there trees? We're going to, uh, we're going to double that up a little bit. We're going to say this is 300 feet. So every two or every square would be two feet of movement. Uh, no, this is all open field. You a picture on the horizon toward the top and bottom that there is a, a wood lit, wooded line. Kind of, this is a cleared fallow field. This is a field meant for farming. It's been tilled. You see a lot of the crop has already been taken out or at least harvested. But you, there is some tree line along each side. And more to the point, and I will draw them for you now, there are going to be... Uh, I got un, that in my pocket. Unbeknownst to him, not squares. I don't like squares. They're not a creative The course in the road. Right? Uh, there you go. That's the course, they get everywhere. I like that song. I like her. Do you? <laughs> What's her name? Natasha Bedingfield? But do you have a yeah. pocket full of sunshine? Is it all your own? Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Natasha Bedingfield. Yes. All right. And so for those of you that are observant and because the hunters right. would have, have told you where... So uh, the tracks what guys, have been set. What do you guys want me him. to do? Just fly over there and just it's piss him off real good? They don't imagine he's going to waver too much. And more to the point. All right. That's something I could do. Oh, maybe. Yeah, bring him this way. Are we? I guess we need to put ourselves on the map, huh? Yes. And if, if you do believe Pello, I will give you the chance to... Uh, by the way, this line I'm drawing is the tripwire line. Where is the tripwire line? I can't see it. I, I will give you guys the chance because you knew he was... Or at least the expectation was that he was going to come from this area. There it is. You guys can there position yourselves anywhere beyond the tripwire line if you so wish. I, was like, I can't see the trip line either. Oh, well, I mean, do that. Are you guys not seeing... Oh, did it not draw I that see, Okay, line? now, there we go. Okay. I'm ready to just fly directly in front of him and get his attention and get him to follow me into those traps. Jaya is uh, feeling that she needs to confront this beast as head on as she can. So, I say I need to be within a certain range to be able to do anything, anyways. All right. Then as you guys do that, you do, in fact, hear the thud of impossibly heavy footsteps reverberating over the horizon. Yegor Bone Crushers, you suspect the hill giant, appears over the horizon to the west and begins plodding uh, toward the village through this field. So Pello was correct in his estimation. Jaya is going to look at the giant again and look over to the rest of you and say, well, it is indeed a good day to die. Bone Crusher's a gross-looking figure. He towers... Yeah, the <laughs> Bone Crusher's a gross figure. He towers to the height of a tree. He's as wide <laughs> as a cart. For him. Rolls of fat hang over a filthy loincloth, and there's crusted blood rimming his crooked grin. In one hand, he carries an uprooted sapling, and in the other, mm. he holds this vast brown sack with some stains that I am sure the four of you, or five of you, if you believe Tasher to be in the forest woodline, you know the origin of those. He is going to start making his way through this field, and as soon as he sees people, uh, so, he is going to bellow out his desire for all the food you have. I had this arrangement, and I demand Giants are relatively intelligent creatures, I take it, in, in this lore. <laughs> oh, but but, but when I say that, I mean, like, they are, they're not just, like, that says, and that's exactly drooling on themselves. They don't have. understand what things are. Like, he understands speaking to him and stuff, right? Uh, no. no. The opposite. <laughs> no. That 
yes. Uh, this giant exists. He, let me just peel. His charisma is like six, and his wisdom is like nine. Oh no, I'm just so going. I want to basically fly humanoid. close enough to him and uh, just say, "Eagle, we're about the deal." Kind of distract them long enough that I can common. then throw the sand so in his don't eyes think and fly you're away. Get too much out of him in terms of a cognizant conversation, but and I'm sure. prepared to make a check for that. <laughs> sure. Uh, yes, you should. So uh, this, I, I will because it, I right, find what this am really I, uh, funny. What am I checking? I for you as well as it may. So before we roll for initiative, yeah, go ahead and roll up on this giant and say say your piece and see how you drop this sand. You know, that's a good question. I'll give it with your flying and whatnot. Okay. We will make it. Okay, so I'm flying. I, I fly up toward him. Slightly skilled. And just uh, yelling out do, at him, you know, like about the the I deal, mean, the food, the food, you idiot, do that. We'll do and uh, get close up to him and may, <laughs> oh, may the gods be with me. It's not terrible. I. All right, so <laughs> okay, get okay, close Chris enough Jericho. to him. And, yeah, just about the deal. We've we've brought you everything you've wanted. It's just, if you could please, and then before I say anything else, I just no, grab it from my side and go, pack of sand, and throw it right that'll in his eyes. succeed, so speak your piece. <laughs> and then fly, and then start flying over past the, uh, the first trap. Shishasha. <laughs> and, uh, shishasha, you shall, in, in the words of uh, yes. the oil baron. He is going to- I do not want to run across him, if you know what I mean. Yes, you're you're flying in defiance of, of Earth and her gifts. May you not come crashing down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Igor is going to a uh, kind of motion. He's got uh, was it forty feet of movement? Yeah, he's got forty feet of movement speed. So he's going to kind of shamble his way to about here. So you've got the right idea. He's made his way into the path of that first trap, but he's not quite there yet. I'm going to say that with the stumbling and whatnot that he has done, though, uh, he's going to have half speed for his next turn, which should put him in a place to, if you get him in the right area, which I think I angered him for him to fall in. But with his eyes being filled with the sand, he's trying to brush. You hear the of him trying to I'm stab him. This Lord said eye for an eye, so I'm going to stab him in the uh, eye. He is going to be stumbling a bit. I also got a 20. And with that, <laughs> let's roll for some It's just a contest. But we're Gimli and uh, Legolas. It's just a contest. Okay. <laughs> I got a 20 total. Dag, okay. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all it is. All right, so 20 and 20 for you guys. Jenny, I'll add a turn as for 14. 14, okay. 14. Uh, let's see. What did I roll for Jaya? She rolled a 15. <laughs> So plus two to her, or no, she'll be plus three to her, so that'll be 16. So she will go here. Uh, Yigor is going to be last. He's kind of a dim-witted creature. He's only got a two. Yeah, yeah. And then the hunters, uh, collectively, <laughs> we will be doing a collective turn for them. Now let me see if I can... I will make the move for Tastra. I'll just throw her over here so I can add her to the order, maybe. All right. Well, so I can see the top of the map. There we go. Well, I think the smart thing to do would be to, to pop him in the face with the bow. Okay. Uh, that's something I can't do. So with that in mind, Rosenblatt, okay, you I'll are up it. first. Don't worry about it. Uh, that's a 14. Okay, that is something you can do. Give me your attack roll. Oh. I was wondering about that since this is a big, big guy. But a ding, ding, ding. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, that's enough oh, to hit. Four. Some damage. My old friend. <laughs> four. Jesus, I threw a toothpick. I threw a grape at him. Big 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 you did. You, you you see this arrow is like going to catch him, catch him in the upper body. But there's a, there's a lot of uh, 
of layers to get through. So it doesn't really stick. I haven't watched that movie near enough to uh, start quoting it. So. a scratch on this giant. Well, giants, like ogres, have layers. Yeah, that's right. Like an onion. <laughs> there you no. go. Uh, well, I also, note, I still have a, I do I still have a move address action? address this a little bit beforehand. Uh, and All right, I'm going to fly back a little it, bit, get, get a little bit out of his range if I can. And you said it was, what, two feet per square? For you guys, if you do wish to enact that. Mm. Yes. Right. All right. So I'm just gonna move back to here, and then I'm done. Yes. Or well, I'm good. There, one square is two mm. movement. Yeah, yeah. So. Square is of movement. Yeah. Okay. That is something you can do. All right, Bacchus, your turn okay. is up. Um, I'm not going to get anywhere near as close as I want. That's about as far as I'm going to be able to get in one turn. But I do have these javelins. Uh, go ahead and hit it, yeah. So I'm going to take one and I'm going to throw it. That's close enough. I'm going to throw it from right there. And we're going to see what happens. I'm going to stab him in his eye. Shannon, I'm going to roll this 20 real quick. Is that all right with you? Well, okay. no, just, just roll no, max damage playing. on this one. Uh, but it is a, it's a 16 yeah. total to hit. That's a hit. Okay. So, D6. Smoke him if you got him. I almost did. That's eight okay. damage. Yeah. That'll cost me a javelin again, but that's fine. I'll get him All back right. eventually. That is something you can do. I'm down to two now. I got two extra. So, yeah, Bacchus just comes charging in and goes full track and field. Hurls that javelin straight at him. There you go. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, no, it's not all I got. Because uh, this action, I think that's how I can kick in my rage. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and kick okay. in his rage. He's he's screaming and just and from there we're gonna move and start hacking this guy up. I yes. No, huh? It's just, well, you know, unless he gets hit with damage that it would resist. So, okay, okay. So you've initiated rage, but that doesn't really do anything else for this turn, correct? Right, right. Okay, good deal. All right, and if that's the case, then it will move on to Jaya, who is going to, because at the beginning of this combat, no, much the same way as you did Bacchus, it's going to take a little bit for him to get to you, but she does not She does want to start taking care of this directly. She is going to pull out her heavy crossbow, and she is going to try to take a shot at this giant. And that is not going to hit. She is going to fire the crossbow. She gets it out. She aims up, but she miscues one of his stumbles trying to get the sand out of his eyes when she fires that bolt, and it's going to skim over his head and into the distance. So Jaya gives a quick damn under her breath, and she is going to uh, use the movement of this turn to put that crossbow back, pull out a sword again, and we move to Jenny. I'm going to follow suit with everyone, even though I don't need to move up as much, but I'm going to stay in line with them basically and I'm going to fire an Eldritch Blast at him okay today is not my day no you it is not because that is not going to work that Eldritch Blast uh, it's not a one so I can't say it fizzled out but you (laughs) you for whatever reason didn't get the feel for how you wanted to cast that properly and it doesn't it doesn't stay too true to its target. It kind of lobs like a. a, a I, uh, Lindsay, I sent you blessings, so, so from now on, you're going to roll all twenties. Out in front of him, but it's not going to make any contact. Okay. Anything else you wish to do on your turn? No. Ah, <laughs> uh, that would be nice. I think I burned them all up last time. <laughs> I see what gift you put, sir. I did not appreciate it, but here we are. So, it is the turn of the hunters, and you hear the shout in the distance from Tastra, Aim! Fire! And you see a volley of arrows coming from about eight, nine different locations in the tree line come over to Yigor, and that is going to give him 
Well, that's not too bad of a roll. That's going to give him 13 piercing damage. Because he is in range just enough. You kind of picture for Tasha, they're spaced out across the field. But within the time that Rosenblood, you got the head start to slow him down. That was the sound the arrows made going through the sky. Putting themselves in a proper position. When they volleyed those arrows out, did they go, (laughs) you? No, no, they went more like, skirt. Okay. I just need, I needed to know that. (laughs) Skirt, skirt. That's the sound of the police. I don't know why. (laughs) There it is. It's the sound of the beast. Speaking of beast, that's what a giant, our bone crusher is going to do. He's going to toddle his way forward here. Again, he's, he's gotten most of the sand out of his eyes. So, and you see that specifically, despite you being the one to aggro him, Rosenblood, it is you and the giant slayer that he has his eyes on. So you get the feeling that if he comes toward you, uh, that's his target. The others are irrelevant right now. It's you. And he is going to find his way into this trap, and that is going to um, take him down a bit. He's going to stumble his way through. Uh, it catches his foot. And that's he's sad. Going to go that down to one that knee hurt him more than all of us did. See it. I rolled a quick perception, and he does not notice that at <laughs> he all. He big idiot. So he's going to go into this, and that's going to give him 10 points of damage. Yeah. Well, nature is a cruel mistress. It's his own it's weight. True. <laughs> and so this is about all the movement he has. It's uh, Obviously, they don't have any ability to dig a hole deep enough to contain a giant. So it kind of it comes up to his knee level, but it's going to take the rest of his movement to even get on the other side of it. And that's where he's going to be. So he's going to make his way out of this hole, and that's where his okay. situation ends. <laughs> but you see he has that sapling drawn up. And ready to go. He is ready to club. Uh, Rosenblatt's going to pull out one of his arrows and lick the tip and just go to himself. <laughs> oh, hero. And take a shot so, at him. That pivots to Rosenblood. He relishes the opportunity. Yeet. Okay, that's something you can Liz, do. Did you hear me go yeet? Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, Lindsay, I'm gonna hit, that is something. I'm gonna hit this max do. damage just you for you. If I hit max damage, I get the uh, I get the ability to say yeet the rest of the game. Deal. <laughs> yeah, I know it's getting real old. <laughs> no. Oh, got her. You made the deal. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Oh! Well, and then I'm gonna fly you did. down you sure here. Did. Oh man, yeah, yeah that's eleven damage. Feet. That is max. Oh boy, uh, Lindsay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I feel bad. Honestly, I feel they bad for the listener. Down there. <laughs> you know, oh no! A little okay. bit. Yeah. <laughs> Your eating days shall continue. I suppose. Yeet. All right, that's it. I'm good. Eat him up. Do you now? <laughs> you should. As well yeah. you should. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, Bacchus, it's your turn. What do you wish to do there, bud? <laughs> oh, I'm going to make this easy. Uh, I'm going to yell at Jaya, go left. And then I'm going to move right up to here. Draw those axes. I'm going to also kick in that reckless okay. attack so that I get uh, advantage here. I got a plus two, plus two melee damage. Okay, so no, no pluses to hit. But I'm gonna roll this. What do I get to hit? Five. Yeah, I think. Where are my actions? There you are. Yeah, I got my axes. All right, take us these axes. So the first attack. Oh, nope. I don't see I could get much better than that. But we'll roll the advantage. Okay, we're gonna stick yeah. with the eighteen. So it's a twenty-three to hit. Very good. Very good. Um and I want to make sure he, make sure that it doesn't do anything. Stout right. and, uh, first attack on your turn, so it only counts on the first one. All right, so that's a hit, and then the damage is again d6 plus three. Da, da, da. It's four. See, I rolled the okay. almost max last time. Four damage there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do. Because that's the bonus, right? Two weapon attack. Where bonus action. Two weapon fighting. Yeah, so you can use the other axe 
I do not add the ability modifier, so what's the difference? What's the ability mod? Okay, so it's just a plus two. All right, so I'm going to swing with nope. the other axe, too, for his bonus action. That one, don't, and... that one doesn't do it, but you do catch him in the uh, yeah, no good. The ankle, the, the calf, as it were, with that first attack, and you all see right. that he kind of reaches for That's it, and all... he glances your way. It, he's probably coming for you. But, but that matters not, because Jai isn't going to take your word. She's going to go She's cool. gonna go to his opposite side, and uh, flanking on... Yep. And flanking means that there's some benefits. Flanking. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. So she, she's got advantage on this melee attack roll. Yeah, that's what she's going to do. She's got that long sword. And because right. she's a two weapon or two handed wielder, she's going to get two attacks on it. So I get to roll this four times. And she is going to connect on both. So that Vorpal Blade's going to go snicker snack. Where's my 1d8? Oh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Oh, snap. So. Hunter, if you uh, if you get the uh, sword or katana are, in Cyberpunk, you do the same. During my playing. Pro tip, uh, use a strong mm -hmm. attack. If you use That's a sword awesome. as the last hit, there's a good chance that you will decapitate them, and it is just as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> Bam. All right, she's going to hit for a total of 15 damage between her two attacks, and you see that, that Igor is bloody. He is he is not doing too hot, and he's starting to regret a little bit, but his focus at this juncture pivots from you, Bacchus, directly to Jaya. And that is going to conclude her turn. Well, already, and Jenny, you are up. I blessed you, so you're fine. I'm going to put yeah, she's a gonna be little fine this bit time. more distance between us, since he's gotten closer. Oh, watch this. I'm going to try again. I told you. Spell. Didn't I tell you? I told you. So anyway, she started blasting. <laughs> Hopefully something will happen this time for the better. Oh! oh! Yes! <laughs> well, he did. I, he spoke the truth. There. <laughs> that's right. So that is a, that's a crit. That's max <laughs> damage. Give me, or that's going to be He's, double damage. Excuse me. He son. said words, son. That's right. Oh, man. That's... Oof. A giant tried to kill your father. You hungry? Oh, 16 total. <laughs> kill my father! <laughs> oh, oh. When he came up and said, give me all the food, we should say, who say anything about food? Anybody <laughs> cooking? That's right. Got all the chick you cooking? <laughs> say anything about all. <laughs> oh, man. That's... <laughs> yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> Just knock over the water pitcher and run. <laughs> he knocks over a tree and rolls the other way. Yeah, Jenny, you catch him square in the sternum like that blast, and you see the singe marks on his body, and he he is feeling it. He is wavering like he was with sand in his eyes, but you can tell it's because there's not as much life left in his bones. Cheers, Kurt. He's got enough, though, to, to keep trotting forward, but before he even gets the chance, you hear all? another aim, right. fire, and you see the volley of arrows come down again. And they're not going to do quite as much this time. They're going to do 10 damage total. <laughs> hey, that's I'll, I'll peel back know. the curtain after the fact. So, All right, so that's going to be what they get. And mind you, he's he's on his last legs. Even, even with the light work they've been doing, he is not looking great. And Jaya, unfortunately, though, is going to have to take the brunt oh, of this yeah. attack. Yeah, I was wondering how last, hard he was going to hit. the last one to smack him in front of him. So he is going to draw that tree that he's using as a club, mm. and he is going to get two attacks with it. Oh. Well, he hit one time with the two. Yeah. Gonna I be can bad. tell you that. Jeez. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw it up on the screen so you guys can see here. He hit hard. Mm. And we're going to add five to that, so she takes 21 damage. Bludgeoning. Yeah, that would kill me. I would be dead. Yeah, yeah. Good that great boy. club. But here's the thing: that was with one hit. Yeah, that's one time. If it, if the second attack would have hit, that would have been probably two of those. 
So Jaya, Jaya's not bloodied, but you can see a couple dents in her armor. <laughs> she's got, but she's a stout old woman. She's got a smirk on her face now because now he's done pissed her off. Plus, she kind of gets the feeling that there's not much left of this giant. She's a. She's My instinct is to fly is directly in front of him and try to stab him in the, the face, but I just saw what he did. So I'm gonna stay. I feel like if I get closer to him, he's Bacchus, gonna no, actually, uh, kill me. Rosenblood so is your your go at him. Yeah, I'm gonna get fastballed out of here. No, I'm just I'm just gonna stay back here and plunk another shot. Yeah, you're gonna hit me. Uh, no, no, it's not. Rosenblood takes another way, arrow out and like licks the tip again and just it tingles with you're excitement. It goes. You're gonna I name like a if sandwich I after me. You're gonna hit me. And, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's not that's not right. with this right, let's poison. Just, Stop let's just double damage them. real quick. Never mind. I gotta go. Please. <laughs> he just falls it's like out of the air. The it's like the frogs it's in, the, in the forest. Whoops. All right. Oh, I guess just typing in the numbers doesn't count if you don't type in roll. <laughs> I mean, it's not double damage, but you do hit him. It's a nine. Yeah, you do. So do some, roll your damage there. <laughs> Apparently not. You can't just tell it the damage. Ooh, yeah. That is something you can do, and Yigor drops to one. He's certainly no he is yeet gore. Breathing hard. You can see the rattling in his chest, kind of through the singes that, that Eldritch Blast put on him. He's he's not doing well in this world. And Bacchus No, he is not. <laughs> and Bacchus the, the movement goes to you, my friend. Okay, so he is still flanked technically, right? Yes, so you get advantage. Advantage for any attack this round? I mean, if you got two attacks, or you'll get all advantage of, on both. all attacks? I, w- I would, what I would I'm classify asking, it with flanking, yeah. Well, let me, the reason I ask is reckless attack gives me, gives me advantage my first attack only. So if it yep. only applies to one, I'm going to use reckless attack. If not, I'm going to leave yep. that out. When a creature and at least one of its allies are adjacent to an enemy and on opposite sides or corners of his space, they flank that enemy. Each of them has advantage on melee attack rolls against them. Okay, so that's everything. It doesn't specify a number, so. Perfect, which means I do not need to yep. worry about uh, reckless attack. All right, so I'll just kick the rage in. Uh, well, it's already going. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna take a, take a sex. Uh, yeah, twenty one. Yeah, yeah. They, that's it. Hmm. Okay, and I forgot this has got to go up to a five d six plus five because I'm raging. Ten yep. damage on the first. Uh, we haven't had a chance to use this phrase yet. He's still up. How you want to do it? Oh, I kind of wanted to do it with the second one. Let me let me go flavor it. Yeah, it with by the all second means. One, then the first one to go in. As he goes down to a knee, the first one goes in to his side uh, and causes him to, like, rear back in pain. And as he kicks his neck up into the air, Bacchus uses that first one. Like, he grabs onto the handle dug into him, pulls himself up, and drags the other axe across his throat and slashes Mm -hmm. his throat and then comes down on the other side holding both of them. Cuts right through him. There is the Rosenblood. You're, You're happy you're at a safe distance because there's spurting. There's a... There's a space there that you can oh, see yeah. that you couldn't see oh, yeah. just a few moments ago. And as this thing gurgles, it's going to stumble. You <laughs> feel the vibrations, Jenny, and those of you that are on the ground level. Rosenblood, I assume you're kind of staying above ground enough to avoid that fate. Picture it as Mega Man. If someone slams on the ground, he kind of does a nice, full animation. He wasn't so bad. He just Igor comes bad upbringing, face down. You see it pull out, and that's that's the end of Igor Bone <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Woo-hoo. He's, he's just a sailor in New York. <laughs> it's Milla time. Jaya, Jaya looks at you, Bacchus, and she says, well, I suppose I'll be bequeathing that uh, moniker here when it's all said and done, but she looks at her dented armor and says, I, I made it better than I thought when I left out. <laughs> Yeah, it's not just me. I said it before. Team effort. She just for the just for the sake of it, she's gonna go ahead. She sees that you've done half the work of taking care of this part. She's gonna take that long sword up and she's gonna take take it off the rest of the way. That head is coming clean. Yeah, finish him she's off. She's gonna make sure there is there there is nothing of uh, hope that he can come back. And 
she does it pretty cleanly. Actually, I'll go ahead and give a, a couple rolls with her long sword. Yeah, no, she does that pretty cleanly. She she still li- got the fire to, to swing that sword pretty well, and it comes down, goes through. He lived a good life. And that's the last of Yegor uh, Bone Crusher. As the... Uh, yes, the Rosenblatt lands scared. and uh, looks at the body and looks at, at everybody else and says, oh, that well, wasn't such that a chore, now was it? He lived... <laughs> yeah, Rosenblatt, do you wish to eulogize this uh, <laughs> this hill giant? <laughs> As you say that, you see, and I'm not going to put it on the map, the sloth of uh, farmers, including uh, the... Oh, the Bright Hearths, they come through. The Bright Hearth clan. You're going to see Grigor come through. Oh. Uh, as you get, oh. you know, your voice carries a bit in this field. As they get closer, Bastard. you get the feeling that Grigor wants to, like, smack your bird head if he didn't think it would curse him. <laughs> he, he, doesn't know, he doesn't know enough about you and your kind. So he doesn't want to tempt fate that way. Tastra comes out of the field. You can tell she's excited. She hasn't had to, this kind of adventure in a while. And Pello is going to come through uh, relieved. Uh, the, he, he wants to celebrate. He sees the head kind of off of the bone crusher laying there in the field. And he just looks at the five of you as he comes running. He, he definitely avoids that trip that trip rope. He's astute <laughs> enough to know that, well, he crawls under it because he's a halfling. But he does get there. He will come join the five of you in the field and say, Frickly, it's saved! You guys have taken care of this. I'll, I can't say that I really felt 100% confident that Frickley would survive this, but I must say that we in this village are forever indebted to, to the five of you for, for everything you have done. Tastra to the hunters, Grigor as he yells over, the farmers and all, we, we can stay. We have our home. Bacchus catches Tastra's attention and only kind of half grins as he says, You managed to not even hit me. She she gives a quick smile and laugh and says, Well, shooting arrows is our business. We are good at that. You have our things. <laughs> and you ours. And Jaya, she looks at Pello, and she's going to kind of make, make her rounds here as she looks toward the giant and says, <laughs> Well... I didn't expect to be able to live up to that moniker any longer, and hell, I didn't even expect to make it out of this oh, encounter. You. Well, he gave it a good <laughs> college try. He gave a good effort to put me down once and for all. Alas, I appreciate your faith in me, and uh, you will. Rosenblatt's gonna look over at her with a with his eyes up and go, "See, think, good day." I think my days being so remote and isolated from society may. Maybe winding down a bit. <laughs> he points at his wings. He's like, nope. She looks at you and says, well, you didn't get hit with a tree, now did you? <laughs> <laughs> she gives you a quick, you think it's a glare, but it's probably more of just that one of the uh, Clint Eastwood, yeah, yeah, squinted eye looks at you. Uh, Jaya specifically is going to make her way to Bacchus and say, well, hail and well met to a new giant slayer in our midst because you are the one that, that struck the killing blow as it were. Uh, I feel as though this may, may serve a bit better as a token to your adventuring than mine. And the amulet you saw earlier, you saw it glinting in the sunlight as you approached her. You now get a good look at it because she's taking it off from around her neck and, and giving it to you, if you will so allow her, she will put it around your neck. Either way, you notice that it has uh, actually a giant slayer engraved at the base of this amulet, and it is made of mithril. <laughs> and don't know that it will do us much in this time, but I will make this note time for you, g- Hunter. Uh, if you are wearing this amulet, you have advantage on all social interactions with dwarves. Time to head over to Ironforge. A very odd thing, I know. Indeed, we will. <laughs> uh, Pello, Pello looks to the group of you and says, if I can compel you perhaps to, to, to stay one more day, uh, that we may uh, celebrate and feast at, at my establishment to celebrate the protection of Frickley and also to, to share with you the, 
the uh, award. Rosenblood is going to step up and say, and like I said before, trinkets and jewels uh, of, from a poor village really don't interest me. I just uh, mostly wanted to see a giant for myself and see if I could take one down, as I thought I could. I, I absolutely did. So, no, I think I'll be taking my leave, if you don't mind. Rosenblood was his last name. <laughs> Be that as it may, Rosenblood. Uh, well, I don't have a last name. I don't know it either because it got uh, lost. I think it was it was like Squawk or something. Ah, it was. I mean, again, we yes. don't know that yet. <laughs> yes. Because we don't know your first, or we don't know what it is. But Rosenblood's the only moniker these people have. That's right. <laughs> It was lost to the bird languages. Well, bird law it is a quaint place, I won't lie. So I think but I'll take you up on that I, offer. Rosenblatt but for now, Star I think I might go check out that tree. So he kind of lifts up in the air and waves at Jenny and back as it says, next time, see if you can uh, keep up and flies away. Hmm. <laughs> And as you see him in the distance, Bacchus and Ginny, you hear the Eric Andre theme with Will Reed right back, right next to his visage in the distance. <laughs> uh, for what it's worth, Ginny and Bacchus... Uh, I leave, you get a bigger cut. That's, now family, that's good. Uh, jewel, or that's just helping everybody. With you if you so wish. And if you do accept, they will be worth 100 gold to each of you. <laughs> what's that no it's 200 total so 100 for each of you Yeah, it's a for what it's worth, it's a cache of five pink pearls. Cool. Yeah, so, and we and with that, my friends, unless there is anything else you wish to uh, entertain with the group that you see, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure Pello is going. Hope to you guys are cannibals. Walks back to the uh, Blue Duke. So, what do we do with a giant corpse? Mm-hmm. Uh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, and with yeah. that, we've got to do that on Friday. Oh my right. god! And with that concludes. It was a rush show. Named Giant Slayer by NT right. Black. Right, right, right. Uh, before yeah. we give a quick shout out to this person, let's give a quick shout out to Christina Applegate. Yes. We failed to do that earlier. Yeah. Woo! You did. No, we yeah, did. We got to make sure we get it in. It was also like eleven o'clock at night, though. It's so. true. Yeah. It's true. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll peel back the curtain a little bit. I did not That's think fine. as soon as we started this giant encounter, I was like, yeah, no, things are going okay enough to where I can't stretch us out into an hour. Next of an week, next week, so it's going to be we'll a solo adventure where uh, Rosenblood investigates minutes, the truth. Clearly, there wouldn't have been We've much to keep w- that going. <laughs> We've done worse. No, it's, I've done the same thing. Yeah, I've done the exact same deal. That's totally <laughs> the blurg, <laughs> the tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have anything Why original. Did you say it like the glow. What's wrong with you? Uh, no, I was just like, like the blurg. The blurg. the blurg. That's where the globe came from, though. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Forgive me. No. The only thing I can think no. of is the blurg. Uh, I, uh, Cody, I'm going to let you wrap up your stuff before I say anything about like going forward. So, is there anything else you want to uh, add? No, here? other than just joking that, uh, by God, uh, Jenny, you'll really appreciate that your roles. It was a five athletics check was required to get across that tree. Oh, jeez. So you rolled a four, wow. and then Jaya rolled a one. I'm like, well, I guess this is how this is going to go. And I do Look, apologize. I got to roast a centipede, at least. You did, and bully for you, because uh, if you noticed, they only had, well, like, five HP. Oh. Or so rebuck. the fact that it got in on you like that, I was like, dang, that's not bad, or that's not a great I look. wanted to say th- sudden, something about that either, or earlier, but I uh, might have okay, been well, mute, mind. so. We're good now. It's like, foam. Um, yeah. Before... Hell- hellish rebuke's a hell of a thing. <laughs> before uh, right, before yeah, Hunter talks rebuck. about what, what we're going to be doing going forward, I just want to, and I admit it sincerely, I want to take a second out to thank Cody 
for there running this for us and doing a great <laughs> job. It was a lot of fun. My folklore um, band in I, I, I feel very attached to these characters already, and that, that means a lot to me. So uh, thank you for doing this for us. You did a fantastic job, and uh, I look forward to doing it again sometime with you. Good. Uh, I, I do appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity. Like I acknowledge, this is my, my first running of any kind of DM situation. I've been a player for a couple of campaigns now. I haven't run anything of my own accord. And it was again, fun. credit to the module where it belongs for giving me a platform on which to, to do true. some things. But I, I appreciate you guys being a, a willing and, participant. And we did it, we did it on Podzilla. That means a lot to me that your, your first intro to this was on our podcast that we all do together. That means a it's lot true. to me. That makes me I, proud. I, I had not. Past tense. And here's hoping that those of you listening enjoyed it. Again, as as always, I know Hunter's going to jump into a couple things, but if you do have thoughts, you have recommendations, yeah, suggestions for the DM or the party writ large, <laughs> we've got a couple ways to contact us. I'm at Cody Sanders on Twitter, Facebook and you can go to anymore. Reddit slash r slash podzilla 1985 there's also a facebook i believe still out there somewhere in the ether let us know i i don't i mean that that's why i keep saying it it's like i don't i have one but it's dead Okay, I wanted to make sure that wasn't just me. Yeah. Yes. I'll be honest. Right, I'm yeah, no one, no one will know much. I, yeah. I've lost Hunter for the last couple seconds. So I've, sure, I've heard, on. like, clip, clip, clip. That's okay. I mean, we were just <laughs> quiet while you talked. It'll be on yours. It's fine. Literally. <laughs> literally, after you said long story short, Until you cut out again. Until start jabbering. <laughs> All right. It happened. Oh my hey, god! I heard I'm sorry, Hunter. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh jeez, this is what I get. This is what I get for taking us longer than two hours. Yes, I hear you now. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear you guys go back to it again. If with the a little bit of time we had left between the holiday break, I thought if this oh. was going to comply, we may have done a second or a final session, but. I don't know if a one session campaign is really going to do us well yeah. to kind of get in and out before the holiday break and then the beginning of Dawn of Defiance. So we will park D and D five E here. Although I feel like as Shannon said, and I appreciate, it, I feel like these characters have done well for us thus far. And I think as speaking of holidays, along, Lindsay, any other if breaks along your the way, left leg was Thanksgiving an Hunter, and your right leg was Christmas, uh, as well deserved, do you want to go uh, to target to take a respite with us? from DMing? We'll pivot back and see what fun we can have with these three. <laughs> I assume that's a yes. You do want to go to Target. Okay, let's do it. I wanted to make a bad joke, Lindsay. <laughs> the hunter I... breaks through the ether just long <laughs> enough to say no. no. <laughs> All right. I mean, I told you earlier I want to go to Target, so All right. it's fine. Well, I know, you, you and did. you succeeded. Yeah, you rolled a nat, you rolled a nat twenty. You did it. All right, that sounds good. Cody, take us out. Mostly just because my fingers need a break from all this cross dish <laughs> that I'm trying desperately to get done before this evening, and I can't kind of feel my fingertips right now. Well, there you go. Yeah. Cody, I will Cody end the show. I will. Uh, bing, ding, 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 ding.